the other side, mm -hmm. like over there. But now it seems it's it's fun. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't mind that much. Maybe I can turn off this. Oh, nice. Okay. Nice. Okay. So Mingus is your tutor. Mingus is my tutor, yeah. And how how does it work? You have to choose your tutor. Like basically, I don't even remember when we had to choose it. Like in the middle of the last semester, we there, you get like a list of the names who is available to be your tutor. Mm -hmm. And I think if you want to have a tutor from outside, you have to apply for it. Wow. Yeah. You know, um, but basically, yeah. it's like once a week meetings. For us, because Mingus is very special because he's every Tuesday in school because he has the Mingus class, mm. so that's why he's there every week and we, he also talks to us. But like some tutors also only like talk to you like once a month or something like this. Like, okay. It really depends. I mean, usually you can always contact them and ask if you have like specific questions, but... To bring them to school will be harder unless yeah. it's someone that already is there. Yeah. It's something very, very like, good to know. Like, I mean, but I think most of them are in school, mm. um, but yeah, I also haven't talked to everybody yet, so I don't, don't know exactly what's going on. And what is your last, like, what is your project is about? So one of the two projects, because we have to make two, is, uh, like an upcycling project where I just want to play around with as much like shape and colors as possible and create like kind of my own fashion language in that sense but completely made from old materials i hope that i'm gonna collaborate or work with symphony who's like this company you know when you donate clothes in like these boxes mm -hmm. they sort them and then they send them to secondhand stores or to africa and like all this stuff okay and i hope to get like a big bunch of clothes from them and then i can like make new silhouettes out of the old ones wow yeah. yeah and then the second one is uh i don't know i had i had a dream about concrete okay and then i was like <laughs> i want to do something with concrete and then i looked into like what humans make with concrete and it's everything is like so and like at the right angle and like so structured and now i cast the concrete in textile mm -hmm. so i kind of lose the control a little bit and like put the focus on the fluidity of the concrete so like how it creates its own shape within the textile mm -hmm. and then yeah currently i'm just in like a testing phase to see what kind of shapes are interesting what kind of um, yeah, patterns are interesting to make and um, then from there on i don't really know what the outcome is going to be yet but i guess something in the direction of like furniture or sculpture pieces okay well that's cool well you can try i have it here a lot of wool Ooh. it's a dutch wool Ooh. it's one yeah. of the most unwanted materials in the world is it where also antonia got it from i mm. don't oh, know i'm not sure oh. if it was the nitwit stable it's like a farm up north but i don't know Something like that. okay mm. why is it so unwanted it's not soft enough and not long enough in order to make fabric out of it okay so they basically trash it Really? They, they actually trash it. Like, <laughs> okay. and I'm talking about 1.5 million tons every year. Just in the Netherlands? Or? Just in the Netherlands. <laughs> so, um, yeah, okay. so it's, it's, it, it came from my studio. I'm in public private. Yeah. And this is our assignment for this uh, semester to just look for just experiment with okay. the material. But it doesn't matter if it's like unwanted material or like wanted material. Mm. Only wool. Uh, only wool? Ah, so the material is wool. Okay, yeah. okay. The material is wool. Okay. And we're experimenting with it. And when he told me about casting cement, mm. one of my peers did, uh, he cast uh, like plastic on the wool. Mm -hmm. And it behaves really interesting because okay. it's kind of like have this like spongy and I don't know, it's kind of cool. So if you yeah. want to try, you can take some wool here. I have yeah. a bunch and we have many more. Okay. And then if you need more, literally every farm in the Netherlands will give it to you for okay. free. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> well, yeah, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, but this is 
part of like an interesting interesting thing that wool is so good for us for humans yeah and we only use specific ones that is the nicest mm -hmm. so. that you can sell for 400 euros for mm -hmm. a coat the rest is like no <laughs> we don't need this shit yeah and the process also the process of the wool is like um it's it's very concentra concentrated in two areas like you have to send it either to china or to south africa to pro to clean it okay and then to italy to make it a fabric so a yarn, yeah. i'm a yarn yes and then if you want to make a sweater out of it most of the time you send it to india there's already four times that you send the, <laughs> the the fucking wool. Yeah, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for like a local use for that. No. No, but I think Antonia did something. You know Antonia, no? Yeah, of course. I've yeah. been to her house. I, I saw I saw the... So she made like these blankets with... Yeah. I think it was also local wool, but I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. I saw it on her um, portfolio. No. It's really cool. Um, yeah, but they basically told us do anything no. that is not yet exist. Okay. Oh. Like you cannot, yeah, you have like isolation out of wool. Mm -hmm. You have lots of different uses. We want, they want us because we're only eight students, nine students oh, in okay. the whole studio. Okay. So. Do you like this or is it? I love yeah, it. It's nice, right? Now. I love it. Imagine two tutors for nine people. Mm. All for first years. There's not a second year. There's not a third year. No one. It's just us with the tutors. It's wild. <laughs> oh yeah, true. Because you, uh, I told you, you have these like trial things where in first year you already have a studio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we didn't have this. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, true. Oh, nice. So once a week. It's perfect. I love it so much. It's a really good. Uh, tutor student ratio and the fact that we're doing actual stuff very experimental yeah very material based experimental based really like it oh really 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 like it if you're still hungry there's also quinoa and salmon i'm not sure how it tastes because i was really stupid with the salmon and i put some uh, uh sesame oil on it you know sesame oil? Yeah, but which is usually actually quite nice, huh? I know. It tastes like it's rotten. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So I tried now to make it better with some chili sauce and, <laughs> and quinoa and lentils. Okay. I didn't taste it yet. Okay. I mean... <laughs> I'm down to try I'll bring it here to the table. This is like a leftover dinner. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. It's nice, good. Yeah, no, it's, it's not great. I'm telling you, I was so surprised. I made it like two days ago. Okay. And I took a bite and I was like, oh my god, sesame oil. I've never been betrayed so hard in life by a sauce. <coughs> fucking sauce. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, but now maybe I overcame it. Let's see. Yeah, that's fine. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Mm. So for the audience of the podcast, yeah. Tell me a little bit where you're from. Um, I'm from Cologne, Germany. Mm -hmm. um, grew up there my whole life, which is one of the things that, like, <laughs> I think is quite boring when you come to Design Academy and everybody is like, I lived in China. <laughs> Here I lived there. <laughs> yeah, my parents from space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I lived in uh, Cologne my whole life. Um, <laughs> And yeah, it's my high school and like, I mean, we moved from Cologne, like once my sister was born, we moved from Cologne to Troyesdorf, which is like 20 minutes outside of Cologne because Cologne is just too expensive for the whole family. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I had a great fucking childhood, a lot of crazy stuff. 
I thought I would become a football footballer, professional footballer. Then I uh, found the alcohol <laughs> and <laughs> kind of went downhill from there. Mm. Yeah. And then, um, then after high school, I worked a year in construction. Mm -hmm. mm. I also worked in construction, you to know. To make some money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I loved it. Did you like it? Um, I liked one of the two jobs I did, like an electrician job, which I really liked, but then I had this other job, which was on, like in peak summer, it was like mm. 40 degrees inside the construction site, and and I then, like, it also was a two-hour drive there, okay. and they fucking didn't pay the drive. So like mm. so like two to four hours a day, I just sat in the car and like I didn't get paid for it. You you are like make yourself angry more and more before yeah. you even come to the job. Exactly. <laughs> no. Plus also I had to leave at like I don't know six thirty in the morning. I was picked up so we could be there like seven thirty yeah. at the construction site. So I was like crazy. Yeah, it's kind of like make your life very like you you wake up before sunrise. Mm. You go to see literally minutes after sunset like for me yeah. it was demanding during the week i couldn't do anything else mm. i worked like three four months as a construction worker we did lots of like renovation so like literally taking off floor like what ceramic is, floors what is like the typical work hours in israel like is it for constructions or for in general in general like is it nine to five or is it because in germany it's eight like i think the normal one is like eight to four um, in his, it depends which kind of job, but if you're talking about like malls, let's like mm. a mall, no. and you're working in a clothing brand, they open at 8.30, 9, okay. and they close at 9, so okay. it's either you have AM or PM shift. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, but yeah, all the stores, like even the Netherlands, it's very, <laughs> all the stores at 6, they're closed, it's not like that at all in Israel. Okay. But if you're working in like uh, an office, nine to five most of the time, mm -hmm. or eight to four thirty to yeah. four, so you can pick your kids from yeah. school. Mm. Um, oh, so you have like all day school all the time, like always until four thirty. It's an outside school curriculum. Oh. Like school ends most of the time when you're younger until mm. we have uh, like uh, primary school, middle school, and high school. Mm. So primary primary school, it's an it's uh, six grades from six to twelve. Mm -hmm. from like the age of 6 yeah. to the age of 12 and then it's finished around 12 31 but then if your parents both of them are working of course so mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. choose to stay in school until like 4 35 yeah. yeah, kind of i was walking like three kilometers with a kid on my chain <laughs> <laughs> since i'm seven bro <laughs> my parents were like we're not gonna pay for that shit <laughs> walk home walk home yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then, yeah, after high school, I, after I worked construction, I got super sick for a long time. I forgot, like, it's called Fibrosis Fever in German. It's, like, where your lymph lymphatic system, like, swells super big. And, like, I couldn't, I couldn't eat for, like, two months and stuff. Like, I lost, like, 30 kilos. Whoa. I was like this. Yeah, and then, so, like, because I wanted to leave to Canada, like, around my birthday in November. But then I left, like, in February, I think, of the next you year. You were 18? Uh, no, I finished high school with 19 because I read at 8th grade because of mathematics and French. <laughs> <laughs> the French. <laughs> the French. <laughs> so at and 19th, you had this thing, how it started? Like, like this is like a random thing? Everyone can like have it? Everybody has it in their body. It's like a ground thing. And like usually you, you usually only get it before you like fully grown mm -hmm. then as a, if you get it as a grown-up i think it's quite dangerous like you can die from it if you get it like okay. once you're once you're grown up yeah so i was super sick and then i went to canada for a year like work and travel mm -hmm. like one of the best times of my life was like, well, how long have you been to canada so the whole year so i think 2008 no, was it? i finished 2017 and 2018 i went to canada and then 2019 i came back to germany yeah so I did like where have you been to Canada? So I started in Toronto, like for, because Toronto, my, yeah, Toronto, because uh, <laughs> my uncle used to study there, and they had like friends around Toronto where I could start off my because mm -hmm. I didn't go with any like comp because you could either go with the company and then like they give you they find you like a place to yeah. stay and they find you like already like the people that also do work away and then you can collect connect with them, and yeah, so I just went there without anything, just go. Did you did you? 
Is it something common in Germany? In Germany, yeah. Like, I think nowadays, yes. Like, like I think most people go to Australia. So like, if you do like a year, like half a year or a year. Like, yeah. Um, so like a lot of people go to Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and then South America. Are like quite common. I also have a friend who was in Japan for, wow. for like one and a half years. So Working and what's the, like what the companies are. So, so the companies is basically just to, to, to get you into the flow. Like you can, like, for example, you can also go with a company who gives you uh, lessons on the language, for example. Mm -hmm. But then usually they just provide you with the, the security. That if you arrive, um, you're going to have like people that you can talk to. You have like this community okay. where you can ask questions. They help you finding a place to stay. Mm -hmm. um, they help you finding a job and stuff like this. And sometimes this company also provides jobs. For example, um, if you teach German or English somewhere, okay. then you, you, I think you need to have a certain amount of teaching already, but then you can do this in another country, for example. And you were focused on something, you had something in mind or you were just like... No, for me it was just like, I, I've done with high school, I have no idea what I really want to do. Um, and I want to see the world, I want to experience other stuff. I never left Europe. I've been, I mean, almost I mean, I've been everywhere in Western Europe. I haven't been everywhere in Eastern Europe. But like I never left Europe, so I was like, yeah, yeah that's. I think Canada is super interesting, and um, yeah, then I went. And in the beginning, I was just because suddenly I realized, oh, my euros. Because back then the Canadian dollar was still so weak; it was like <laughs> one point six something. Like mm, nice. I was like one euro, and then I, just, I suddenly had like one point five times the money. I was like, oh, okay, so I was, like, <laughs> sweet. I was chilling for a couple of months, just going shopping, just like going through Toronto, just like seeing the city because like i've never seen like a city with that many skyscrapers we have like frankfurt in germany which is has a couple of skyscrapers but it's like nothing compared no. to like when i came to toronto and uh yeah great shopping experience as well like a shit ton of secondhand stores and stuff like this okay. so i did like a lot of shopping there i basically just lived life <clears throat> and then But then I realized that the the vibe of Toronto is very much like Germany, like very strict, like work nine to work hard, and you can enjoy your like afternoon. And then when I heard that Vancouver is like they're super laid back, so I talked to some people from Toronto, like yeah, the people from Vancouver they piss us off because like if you want to get something done on the day, it's like let's do it tomorrow. So I was like, <laughs> those are like my type of people. <laughs> Vancouver next stop. <laughs> Um, and then I found this website called Workaway, where you basically you work for, oh, I know that. for people privately and or like if they have a farm or something. And I met these two amazing guys who lived in the middle of the woods in this huge ass party house. Oh my and god! I just did garden work. I did like a little bit of construction work. That and like, you can live there, and they yeah, give you food, food and everything. Yeah. And wow. Like, yeah, <laughs> that sounds so nice. Yeah, it was like in the middle of the woods. I also got because like the, it was like a gay couple, like both like over 60 and they were lucky enough to buy like a house in Vancouver super early. That's what they sold, so they could dream build their dream house in the woods, basically. Oh, I have a funny meme to show you. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> relating to this. And yeah, I was introduced to the to the gay party scene of Vancouver, which is very very intense. And uh, yeah, it was it was kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yes. This is oh, you cannot see it. Okay, <laughs> it's me in 1992 wasting time resting instead of buying a house that was two dollars seventeen. Yeah. And it's a picture of a womb. <laughs> so. Yeah. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would have been. I put the beers in the fridge. Oh, where? No. Because I have one beer, and I say you have beers, and it was, it's a good idea. I was I was about to offer tea. I mean, I, I have a beer. You can also have a beer, but yeah, I have, have a cold one. one. Uh, I mean, I, I also like room temperature and don't okay. mind that much. Okay. But we can put the rest sure. of them. Yeah, we can put them in the fridge, and then we can move to the living room. Living room situation. Is that really cold or what? No, I don't think this. You want to still snack or? Yeah, I think like... <laughs> we can bring it there if you want. If you also, you're coming with us to the living room. Our fine audience that is no one still, but <laughs> over there. <laughs> Have you seen this table? I made it in the break. In the break? 
in the like uh, you remember that my cousin was here yeah uh, and something was there in the in the middle of the room you yeah. remember yeah it was this yeah. oh yeah uh-huh so nice yeah and it's like everything moves so it's like if you sit here you can take it like <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's super nice. I also like the, the color of the oil that you use, like it's like reddish. Thank you. <laughs> super nice. Um, yeah, so, okay, so you've been in Toronto for like a year. No, I mean, I've been only in Toronto for a couple of months because oh, I've only yeah. like... You've been in Canada for a while. Yeah, and then I've been most of the time I've been in Vancouver. Um, or close to Vancouver when I was when I lived with the two guys I lived like at the it's called the Sunshine Coast it's like two hours outside of Vancouver um, a little bit into the mountains and cheers cheers behind post behind post <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah and then I met a guy at a party that they threw um, okay and he was like ah oh, you're looking for a place in downtown Vancouver so you can work I was like yeah and he was like yeah I have a free room you want to stay with me? So then I got a free room in downtown Vancouver, which is insane. Impossible. Like, yeah. Especially for free. Like, it's too, like Vancouver is really expensive. Okay. Um, and then, like, two, I've lived there two months and started working in a coffee shop. And... Uh, <laughs> well, that was the early days of coffee shops also, no? Not in Canada, no. Oh, it, was, okay. it, was, it was 2018. And in Canada, they decriminalized it quite early. So you could buy and smoke weed every, everywhere, basically, but it wasn't like tax or it wasn't like government controlled. Okay. And then in the, actually in the year that I've been there, they changed it to the fully legal system where it's controlled by the government. And actually by the end of when I like, we just sold, it, sold everything for super cheap to the people or we sold it back to the dealers actually. Um, and yeah, and then my girlfriend at that time came over after six months because then we spent the second six months we spent together. Um, and then we got an apartment in Vancouver where we paid uh, $1,500 per for room. Whoa. <laughs> for a fucking room, yeah. Uh -huh. But it was a super nice apartment too, and we had a nice room. But yeah, it was just. But you also make a good amount of money in Vancouver. And then we both worked in a restaurant for a while around Christmas to just like save up some money. Then the last month of the year we, we spent in Hawaii. Shit. Yeah. Shit. And because we were like, we're never going to be this close to Hawaii ever again. And the flights are super cheap. So if you fly from Germany, it's like 13, 14 hours yeah. and you spend like thousand something euros. So it, let's just do it from here. And, wow. That's uh, amazing. Yeah. Then we just spent some time in Hawaii. Just like, did it change around. the way that you wanted to live? after you had this experience um i definitely like my dream when i'm like older when i'm done like when i, when I retire basically i want to live in a similar house as the guys like i just want to be in the woods have my big ass property but also like have the right to build guest houses and like it's going to be like an open house basically i just want people to come whenever they want and like why have to retire Huh? Wow. I mean, I, I mean, I could, would also love to do it before, but I hope that once I retire, I retire with mm. like a good amount of uh, investment capital yeah. that I can put in something like this, because I'm not a very money driven person. So for yeah. me, it's like I don't really see myself getting rich fast anytime soon. So um, that's that's why I think like after retirement and also that I just want to spend my time in the house, you know, like them, like just garden all day, like grow my own foods. You know, like build some crazy, I don't know, art pieces, build like build some, I don't know, like a bridge in my garden or yeah. my pond or something like this. You know, just like have fun, like having your own little construction And, and before, before you met them, have you thought of something like that? Or you were <coughs> like, what were your dreams before this experience and after this experience? I think. And when you applied to Design Academy yeah. in this, like. I mean, I think before that I was always like, oh, I want to just become rich and famous and live like a fancy ass life and then afterwards like that's not what i need i just want to like have like 
the people around me that I like like spending time with. I want to have like a nice space that is super inviting. Like I just want to have like I really love hosting. So like I just want to have a space where everybody feels welcome, everybody feels comfortable, and also like my because if I move, for example, if I would move to Canada, I would be quite far away from people. So like yeah. I still would create a space where people would be like, oh, we go on holidays. We're gonna go fucking visit Oscar in Canada, like because he has like the sickest place and it's like a retreat for people as well. Like that would yeah. be the dream to just have this. But yeah, before that, I was, I guess I was just like had the big star eyes towards like this. Oh my god, they're all so fancy and like money is so important and like oh I wanna, yeah I wanna make as much money as possible. And now I'm just like I know since I since I kind of read myself into like how money works and like how it make like makes the world tick I'm kind of like oh yeah I don't want to I don't really want to connect my happiness with money yeah. so that's um, that's beautiful yeah and I guess that's like the biggest change and especially then also here where I guess it's a weird environment here because most people in the school come from very wealthy backgrounds that's right I also noticed that yeah and but it's kind of like it's a very it's, it's it's like it's very interesting because yeah. you come to design school and you think okay there's gonna be crazy creative people and the school is not that expensive at least for european students i mean even for non-europeans but for non-europeans it's crazy yeah okay it's like so a regular ten, yeah it's not even regular it's like above yeah above regular I mean, it's still things. cheaper than going to america or anything but like yeah. but it's for yeah. this for these studies it's not that expensive but for europeans everyone can apply yeah and you also get help from the government if you work like you can easily do that but no. still you cannot make yourself here you cannot live here if you're not if you're not coming from a wealthy family it's kind of and it's very expensive yeah and at the end of the day you see that almost 80 percent i would say of the people are very wealthy like coming yeah. from a wealthy family that families, can yeah. handle but I, but I also i like i thought about and i think it's also the reason that if you don't come from a wealthy family, usually you don't, like your parents don't give you the options to like, oh, just choose whatever you want to do, right? Because then often you're, the, I think, I feel like from like, parents got to be like, you should make something that gives you a safety net yeah. where like you have a safety of like, you can pay for your house, you can pay for, but if, as long as you have like parents that are willing to be like, hey, take the freedom, you know, we, we are behind you. So like you can take the freedom to like decide whatever you want to do. Yeah. And you know, like, even if you like the creative, creative field. studies, the creative field yeah. is like it's so unsure if what's gonna happen after school, right? It's like this: either you find something during your studies, but like this is really what I want to do, and like this is where I see myself doing for like for a long time, and like at least for the next five, ten yeah, years. Yeah, and you need to be like a little bit crazy about it almost. I feel like, um, but besides that, yeah, it's it's just yeah. I think that's why. Yeah, and and it's very interesting because sometimes also designers approach design not in this kind of attitude they're really stressed yeah they really panic and it's... when you think of it the only way for you to do design if you have enough means to do it yeah freely that's for example the reason why i'm like in the last couple of years i kind of realized that i don't necessarily i mean maybe at some point but right now like i don't want to open my own design studio like I want to have a work where I, can, I go, I'm excited to go to work and like I have fun at work, but like once I'm done with work, I want to be done with work, right? I don't want to come home, have to stress, oh my God, like this project, like I need to think about what I have to, what I have to do yeah. there, what I have to do here. I need to think like, how can I pay the people that work for me? How can I get my projects from A to B? Like who's going to think? Yeah. It's like so much stress, I think. And I think there's people definitely also in our school that are made for this and I, I can see it from I, right away. I did it I did it before coming to school. Oh actually. you did? Yeah. I had the business for almost three years. Oh damn. Um and it's true what you're saying. Like you always think about it. Yeah. Once you start with it, the first two years are really hard. Yeah. Time management, you don't have clients, no one knows you. Mm. Like it's really going in the dark and I was also working at a, as a I had a side job, I okay. was a bartender yeah. Yeah. during the first two years, so it was a lot of work. Yeah. But after two years, it's manageable. Okay. It's manageable. Like you need to you need to bust your ass for yeah. two years. I, this is what happened to me. Some people it takes them more, some people less. Mm. But once you find the way to make 
people trust you to handle stuff, mm -hmm. it happens after a while that you have enough trust in yourself to handle other people's needs. Oh, that no. when it comes, okay, I have a project. No. I kind of know how much time it's going to take me. I'm going to take some spare time in terms of uh, like the contract. I'm going to ask for more hours to make myself sure. And if I'm not, if I'm not like uh, handling it, no. I'm going to work more. But at the end, you have you divide you divide the contract you divide the workload in terms of you how you work, and then you can handle it. It's not always like oh, I need to bring in a website yeah. in three months. It's I need to do the research in these two weeks. No. And after the research, I'll continue. And you trust yourself that once you will go to the next phase, you know how to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think it's a lot about trusting yourself. Yeah, sure. yeah. it's a lot about trusting yourself. And I think that it's really the, depends on how you, how you want to work. Oh. Because if you have your own studio, you also need to handle the client. You need to handle the money. Mm. You need to have a lawyer. You need to have an accountant. Mm. You need to do your tax. Yeah. Like it's, it's a lot of other things that comes to you. And at some point, you will have to know how to deal with them if you want to have your own studio. So it's perfect to do it as soon as possible to make these mistakes when you have no liability to no one, you yeah. know, except for yourself. The worst case scenario, you go back to your parents' house. Okay. True. Yeah. But also more so in the sense that I, I don't really want to work by myself. I don't know, I'm a very social person and like I tend to lose my motivation when I'm on my own a lot of times. And I need people around me that I feed off and they feed off me. It's like an exchange of ideas, exchange of motivation, exchange of energy all the time. You know, that, that's Imagine something. how many other people that have their own studio want that. Yeah. Probably all of them, yeah. Probably all of them. Yeah. And then when partnerships happens and when that's when you grow together with others. Yeah. And I believe that in our hub here in Design Academy, I feel it a lot in my year. I don't know how it is your your feelings about it, but we're contributing a lot from each other and yeah. we're helping each other a lot. And For sure. if I will open a studio, I know who to call. You yeah. Know? Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I think is so interesting about Design Academy because it's not a school where you study fashion design or product design or industrial design, but it's like you have all these different characters coming together, studying the same thing, but also different because like if you choose three studios like in, in the time that you're there that are completely different from the three studios that I choose, you basically study something completely different than me. Yeah. And but I mean, maybe we're both, we both work with the same materials, with the same concept, with the same maybe. attitude. Yeah. But, but in a different way. Exactly. Maybe someone is more research focused, the other one is more like making focused, and the other one is more focused on like how to tell the story. And if you find the right people that you like connect with and they have like these different aspects of the design field, I think then it's like super nice to build like a team or even like feed off each other in the sense of everybody does their own stuff but then if you need someone there's always like this connection but yeah. yeah i think the thing that is the most inspiring and motivating in, in our school is the people like is it something that you see yourself instead of working for someone else doing after like trying to gather a group of people get a studio have other jobs of course like let's say even a waiter or a bartender three times a week just to make your living yes. in order it's like for the, I think like the nicest thing would be I mean then again would be like to find a space where there's enough space that like I don't know four or five different people it, it's not necessary that we all go there to work together but we get into the same space and kind of start creating on our own and then yeah. like it doesn't have to connect in the end but like it would yeah that would be super nice for sure but um yeah, I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent sure what exactly I want to do after school because I also haven't found like the design field I really want to work in. Let's say like I'm really interested in like interior design and fashion design, but I'm also just like curious to just like see what's what's going on and also I still want to see more of the world and like just travel around. And then the question is, do I try to travel as a designer where I already developed like a certain thing or? Travel now and then 
become the designer? That's I think that's the question. I, I think you're already a designer. You just uh, like design is a way of thinking. Yeah, right? it's a way yeah, of, true. It's the attitude. Yeah, and I call myself a designer even though I'm first year year I'm, mm. but I called myself a designer before I came here, and I feel that to develop yourself and to find your way. It's what you do when you have a studio. I started with building websites, okay. very simple websites, and then one client asked me for branding. I wasn't a brand designer, mm -hmm. but for him I was a brand designer. And then I was like, yeah, fuck it. Yeah. I'm gonna do it for you. I'm gonna take half of the price that I'm taking an hour because I've never done it. I know how the basics works in terms no. of appearance of a brand because I've done, let's say, eight websites before. Mm -hmm. So I have the understanding, but I'm not sure how to do it well, so I'm going to take half of the money. And then after I did this branding, he was very, he loved it. Another guy asked me for branding or a guy asked me for a website and I told him, hey, maybe we'll combine the both. No. Maybe I can do like a touch up on your branding. And, and then afterwards it was like, okay, let's do a UX UI because you don't need a new website. You need a new understanding how your platform works. Mm. And then you develop yourself, but you start with one thing. Yeah. And if you have a passion for one, for many things, do one. Mm. Like you do one, works, not working, you're reflecting, you're continuing. Yeah. And, and I think there's something to, to take in consideration because you are, you're already making your own clothes. You're, already, you know, you're doing lots of stuff yeah. by yourself. And... It's just the, just the trust. Yeah. And, and what helps with trusting yourself is not taking money. Okay. My first few jobs I did for free. Okay. Someone needed a website. I was like, yeah, I do it for free. I've never done it. And then he liked it. He told yeah. his friends. They approached me. I was like, okay, 100 euros. And yeah. I'm talking about four months projects for 100 euros. That's... Because uh... I, I didn't trust myself enough. Okay. Yeah. But after you do quite a while, you're like, okay. I can, I can do it, I think. Let's try to charge someone for 200 euros. Yeah. They agreed. And this is why I said like two years, I worked on eight projects and I didn't make money out of them almost. Because mm. the amount of work, the amount of knowledge that I needed to acquire, you're always learning yeah. through the job, you, YouTube, <laughs> other, other designers. You were like, I, I remember that I took screenshots of really good websites in the field mm. and analyzing them why they're working for me and why they're working for the business and then you're trying to like so it's always learning on the way yeah, uh, yeah and, sure. and and yeah like okay so when when did you apply to design academy so then after and I came, after i came back from canada uh, i first started carpentry actually mm -hmm. um and i just realized that the German system of like how carpenters are treated and how you become a carpenter is just like you're fucking you're a slave basically for like, <laughs> for like three years. You like, just like you get paid nothing basically. You you almost work full time. You have like one time a week you go to school. Um, where where you sit most of the time with a bunch of idiots and just like uh, yeah do this basic stuff that you already did in eighth grade basically plus learn, learn also learn stuff about like wood and uh, um, every, everything around it but and then yeah but also it was like yeah I have to be at work 6 45 work 8 to 10 hours a day easily you know like and then you get paid like two euros an hour <laughs> you know yeah. and uh, and plus then I mean I, I probably would have continued if like the company I worked for would have been like super nice but I had an awful boss and like just yeah just wasn't a nice vibe so like luckily we both decided to like they decided and we decided this is not this is not working so I reported ways and then I had like three months left to uh, apply for design academy and I applied for design academy because <clears throat> so both my parents are creators as well my dad is like a photographer web designer and like he took me to Dutch Design Week, I think the first time when I was like 16 or 17 or something. So almost 10 years wow. ago now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I was blown away by Dutch Design Week. And it, I think 
It's also very harsh to say, but I think Dutch Islamic was a little bit more impressive back in the day. Like it was also more based on, um, not like more based on like product design and actual like maker space instead of like now this like very conceptual, conceptual stuff that like I think it's great, but it's not really my my cup of tea. Let's say, um, and yes, I was just like. I came here and I, that was the first time I realized what design actually is because to me design always used to be uh, how do we make something pretty and how do we make something easily sellable like it was not really like I didn't really know how much thought process goes into like actual design and like also how different design can be in like yeah. completely different fields so um, and yeah then I was like I knew I wanted to do something creative I wanted to do the carpentry and then I wanted to study design because back then I was like, I'm not sure if studying is the right thing for, to me because I was very like undisciplined and like I like learning and stuff like this was just like, ah, I just, nah, it's not really my thing. And then when I heard about Design Academy and the concepts and it's not really about learning, but more about making. Um, and yeah, then I just applied and got in on the first try, luckily. Like, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And that was during Corona, COVID. There was, there was, it was short before COVID. Like basically, Shit. while I was applying, COVID was coming in. Oh, it was January. Oh yeah, yeah. January twenty nineteen. Yeah, that was like I joined January twenty twenty. Yeah, so it was it was still like there is something coming, but no one really knew what was going on. <coughs> um, <laughs> Funny story about that. I mean, no, not even true. No, not even true because it used to be like this that for the interview day you were supposed to come to school and bring yeah. your stuff here, but we were the first ones where they were like, "No, we can't do it. You have we have to do it online." So wow. we were like the first group. I was like, to be honest, at that moment I was super lucky about this. I was like so nervous to like because they're like, "Yeah, there's ten different people and like two tutors and they're gonna look at you and I'm like." Yeah, that's scary. This is gonna be scary, yeah. <laughs> so I was actually kind of happy that it's gonna be online, and then uh, we had a had a great interview. It was like super fun, and then I got in, and yeah, then COVID properly hit, and during that time, yeah, I moved, I moved here, and uh, yeah, I was first shocked by the fucking prices of the housing. Like I came here because I was like, okay, I come from Cologne, it's a city like, com like. 1.3 million people there's like 24 7 you can do stuff there's yeah. like night restaurants there's night shops everything you need like there and i have friends who pay like 450 500 euros <laughs> then it was like okay i'm going to eindhoven i look at the size of the city i was like okay i'm gonna pay like 300 euros right <laughs> and i look at the prices i'm like fuck <laughs> like, yes. this is not gonna happen this is not here. It's not. It's it's insane. Like the Netherlands are crazy. Also, in general, like the like the living costs here. Um, I mean, in Germany also got more expensive since the the Ukraine stuff is happening. But um, it's still like basic rent is is way less. Also, you get more usually for your rent because here also like some people they live in a fucking area, eight square meter room, you know, with like nothing. And so I. First, I didn't, so I wasn't. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm listening. Yeah, first, I um, I was couch surfing for three months actually. You were what? Couch, couch, surfing. couch surfing, yeah. Whoa! Yeah, I, was, I mean, I was, I, was, I was super lucky because I found a guy who had a spare room and like I could live in a room, so I had my own room. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I was couch surfing for three months and then I found a place in Heldrop, so I lived like. like from here it's like seven kilometers. Wow. Um, Something like buses to school. The no, I bike. How much time is it? For me, I bike. I bike quite fast. I also have a pretty good bike. Mm. Um, I bike like twenty minutes. Okay. Yeah. My record was like sixteen minutes something. <laughs> when you're but, late. <laughs> but then I'm also like, I mean, I I can't really go slow. Like it's it's like a sickness. Like once I'm on my bike, like I need to go as fast as I can until my legs are not burning. I'm not stopping. Yeah, and so that's why sometimes I'm just like in school, like super sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I moved to Geldrop because, I'm, and even there, the prices are going up at the moment. Like every year, our landlord just raises the rent, and I'm like, well, yeah, like not surprising at all. Yeah, and then don't sell it as a student house, right? If you want people to pay money for it, then try to get other people in it. 
that, but then they can't because those houses are in such states that no one else except students is going to move in. Yeah. And but still. Th and still they're going to raise the rent. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, finding an apartment here was a hustle. Oh. I, mean, I lived in the Netherlands before. Oh, you I, did? Yeah. I, I manifested my way in Design Academy. I moved here a year ago. Oh, really? A year and a half, actually. But now. in Eindhoven also? Or no, in Delft. Okay. Because my sister actually lives in Rotterdam. She... Mm -hmm. She studied uh, the TU Delft architecture. Okay. And then she told me, hey, um, you want to apply to a design school? Apply to Design Academy. Oh. It's a great school. Oh. Read about it a little bit. And then move when you can. Just move to Europe. Try new life outside of Israel. I was really keen to it as well. I tried to understand if I can continue with my business mm. when I'm not fixed in one place. Mm. And it worked kind of magically. Like Since COVID, clients don't want even to meet you in fa no. face to face. No. I had clients like for a year. But what is like your main client base is still like... Israel, they were all Israel. No, but still like websites and uh, digital stuff? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I did like a UX, UI, works i didn't uh so basically website also the web design field is very large yeah like you have templates and you have full customization yeah. and also the, depends on what the client can pay because you can also have full custom customization mm -hmm. but still use a pre-based components mm -hmm. because you work with something less expensive than a developer yeah. so working with a web designer that knows how to drag and drop but don't know how to change components okay and it's less expensive so you ask the clients what he wants yeah. and most of the time most of my projects were i'm gonna do a lot of research i'm gonna do a ux it depends on your users and i did like interviews with their customers um trying to understand what they need from the website how people find them etc etc yeah. and then I offer them, hey, do you guys want to do it like full customization? I will do something crazy and we'll give it to a developer. It's going to cost four times more than do something like WordPress no. and Elementor that it's just drag and drop based. No. And most of them chose the Elementor drag and drop based. So at the end, the UI and the UX was influenced by how we can build the website. Mm -hmm. so it, and this is also what I realized that I don't want to continue that path because you're doing your best and at the end, they don't want to pay. That's the problem when you work with like companies and like, because it's usually, you know, it's always like, how can we minimize costs and maximum, maximize profits? Yeah. So it's like, yeah. And your role as a designer at the end is just like they do what a tui to you, you know? Like, like, uh, uh, and I think, like, but that's I think what's so interesting. I think once you have like a certain standing and like people listen to you and like people trust you, I think also oftentimes you can just tell people, like, yo, I looked at your website, I looked at your stuff. I think you need the full on pack, like, full on customized package to just like, yeah. f like give the brand or your company like what, what it needs to be communicating what they want to communicate right yeah it's 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 like so. you need to pick your wars yeah. basically like if if, yeah. if like you you see the client and what he wants to achieve and if you can achieve it not with full customization like let's say one of my latest projects was a huge company 60 years old have four manufacturers in israel and they their services were doing uh, customization uh, molds for uh, like big industries like the army, the medical, agriculture. If you need like a small screw or a big machine or okay. very precise yeah. molds, you contact them. Okay. And their website was so shit that I talked to their customers and I realized that their customers are engineers mm. or entrepreneurs mm. that knows exactly what they're looking for. Yeah. It's not like someone randomly on the internet was like, I need a perfect mold for and all the time. Yeah, yeah, no, it's people that have that want the exact thing. So yeah. the idea behind the website didn't need a lot of like crazy, yeah, it's not a crazy UI. Yeah, for sure. It's yeah. just what are we showing to the customer when, 
how big, how do we talk to them, how easy it is to contact us. Yeah. And when you focus on these things, you don't need a fancy no, no. interface. Sure, you no. need something very simple with lots of pictures, with the easiest way to contact that you know their uh, like certifications. And no. So that was the things that I like to do, like to understand what the, cost, what the company need, what the no. customer need, and how do we bring them something that can last, let's say 10 years without to redesign the website because it's a living organism the website always um and how much content do they have and how often they refresh it so it's a lot of things to take in consideration so um but also there i was like this is not like i love it because i managed to bring myself to a point that i'm actually a designer even though i never studied it but I don't feel that I'm a designer. I feel that I'm a, like a contractor, you know? Yeah. People call me like, hey, we need this. I'm yeah. like, I'm come like to a house, like, okay, there's gonna be a wall, there's gonna be like, okay, come on, let's do it. I, I didn't want to be that. Yeah, but I, I guess that's like usually how you get into the design field is like yeah. doing these kind of jobs where like the creative freedom is not that big. It's more like, what does the client want and how yeah. can I achieve what the client wants, yeah. Yeah, and, and now I think how to how to bridge these things. Mm. And this is something that's very interesting to me in Design Academy, that they also talk a lot about we don't need more chair designers, we don't need more lamps in the world, we don't need more benches or tables, there's enough of those. We need people who think differently about how the world is going to look like and yes and no but i think it's also kind of wrong to tell people that it's not like to be a great designer you need to have this urge to change the world in a certain way because that's sometimes when design came in the beginning was kind of like i had i had struggled with it a lot to like have this like burden put on me that's like we are the ones sitting here thinking about how can we make the world a better place but at the same time also like all we kind of want to do is just something pretty and nice that sells very well right mm-hmm. it's like i think there's a big yeah, contradiction yeah. within the design world where like also often i feel like some of these pieces they just have this pretentious story just to have the story behind it yeah even though it has nothing to do with what they're actually selling or what they want Sometimes to sell dutch design week let's say um like the sorry for talking shit about the previous um uh, graduation shows but a lot of storytelling that at the end yeah. what did I see yeah. like how does that related like I see beautiful ceramic pots how does he talk about child labor in Africa exactly I don't know exactly and this is something that I think we need to be as designers with the hand on our pulse to, to check mm-hmm. um, what what's my story where i'm how i am as a designer in that no. and what i'm gonna do with that like maybe like am i am i here to tell a story i can tell a story in many different ways no. or am i here to visualize a problem because if i'm here if i'm here to visualize a problem mm. i think that it's also a designer needs to do that no. but where is your say at the end yeah no. I can visualize a problem beautifully, but if I'm here only to take existing parts and put them together in order for someone to understand, I also influence how they look on this. Because I put it that way. I'm not 100% observing a situation. I'm observing it through my eyes. So, and some of the projects that I saw here I was looking at them and they were very um, subjective, but the work was very objective. Mm. Mm. And that, that, was, that was very weird to me, this communication of, I'm looking at a problem with a certain way in my own eyes, yeah. but I communicated that no one can understand unless he's reading my whole full description of the work. 
and I'm, I'm kind of afraid that that like that's the trajectory of of me as a designer. Yeah. Did, but did you ever think of that? I mean, yes and no because like I'm a very visual and like. Even though if you want to roll, I mean, no, no, I don't smoke. Um, very visual and material guy, so I I usually don't start with a problem. Like mm. for me, most of my creativity comes from a positive space. So like I really struggle with like think about all the issues, think about everything goes wrong, and now make something that like makes the situation better. To me, it's more like I want to create even more comfort in my comfortable situations most of the time, right? Okay. So. To me, it's to me. This was also one of the hardest things at Design Academy. That like, there was so much focus on everything that's bad, and like, how can we make this better? And like, how can we save certain things? How can we make the world great again? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, um, yeah, that. Uh, but I'm super like I'm super intrigued by whatever when everybody's like when someone is like really passionate about like a topic and like this is really something I want to change and I, I can see it and I'm like, I can feel it. Then I, I also think it makes a lot of sense. But if you just do it because the school tells you, Hey, this is important that we tackle all these problems and we want to see you tackle these problems. Then I'm like, does it really come from you? Or is it just because the surroundings that you're in right now give you this feeling that you need to do it. Right. Yeah. And then sometimes I feel like it's a little bit pretentious to do it. If you actually don't want to do it, I feel like, then you need to, I think that's also the point where you like, you can't go to university, then you need to stand up for yourself. And if you make sense of it and you tell the teacher, no, I'm not going to do this like this way because I want to do it like this, 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 and you give them a good reason to do it like that. Usually also no teacher is going to be like, ah, oh, no, then yeah. don't accept that. But as long as you have the confidence that you're going to do something with it, just you make it your own and you can come across, you bring across the message that you want to give. That's, that's is this something that, that you developed here? Um, I think also now that you just said it like with the age difference, I think it's it's just a little bit like having this life experience, let's say, where I I went through so much shit in my life already. I had ups and downs like crazy and like I just had a little bit more experience of yeah, positive influence and negative influences in my life that I kind of think I have a little bit more insight of like what I really want to do and like how I have this you know, how I can position myself within or against someone or to like with someone because in our first year like one of my biggest issues were, were like unfortunately most of the time it's the Dutch people because they come straight from high school like 17, 18 yeah. and they still think they're in high school and it's like the teacher tells them like we want this like this and like no i can't do this this is so stressful and blah 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 and i'm like oh you're in university now like <laughs> shut the fuck up and <laughs> yeah. do your work right yeah. like um and then I'm, I'm trying to tell them like don't stress about it like it's not school anymore like it's not gonna be like there's a right and wrong you can make if someone tells you it's wrong fucking convince them why it should but it's not wrong but it's right yeah right, right like just if you really put your heart in it if you just did it to do it also, the result looks like it. Yeah. Like, you, you always need to to put yourself out there. And this exactly. is, yeah, and this and is I something. Mean, that I, with that, I also struggled a lot in the beginning. Like, I just also did it because I had to do it. I mean, I still had fun doing it. And I, I still, like, I, I always had, like, stuff where I thought it has a lot of potential. I could go somewhere. But that's also something I think is a little bit pretentious about Design Academy. That, like, so often there's so much stress and so much, like... We have to do this and do this and do that. And then like, oh, the semester's over. Where's your project? Oh, it's in the trash. Yeah. You know, like, you know how much shit leaves, like, when you go to the cleanup day, right? And you, you see how much people just leave in school. And it's like, but then the next year, they're like complaining that there's not enough materials. And it's yeah. like, bro, you just left all your shit in school. Like, what did you expect? Of course, there's like, yeah. nothing. Like, you need new stuff now. But yeah, yeah. But so in the beginning, I, bas I basically did it because I just wanted to do it. And I think there's still a certain thing that you should also do stuff that you just want to do. But if you can combine it with like a cause and you can combine it with like a certain research and you combine it with like something that comes from your heart, 
then the sky's the limit. Yeah. Like, how do you see that in your final graduation project? I think this semester is like the first time that I actually start from the beginning to like focus. Okay, I like I come to school every day. I put like all my stuff into school. Like I kind of build my own work corner in school. So I couldn't just stay home, you know, because now it's like you don't have classes anymore. So basically, it's all your own responsibility. So there's no one who's going to tell you, ah, oh, you have to be on school and, and Monday morning. And if you're not, you know, your grade is going yeah. to go down, right? It's not like this anymore. And you have to, you're completely responsible for yourself. And in the beginning, I was kind of afraid of it. But now it just feels so good to just like constantly do something. And you don't have to put the stress on yourself that like, from day one you need to have like a concept ready and like you need to know what you what the final thing is but i think also that's like i think Ming just did a very great job to like just calm us down and being like yo take a step back try out stuff um and see like what you actually want to do in this phase of the trying out and then you can come up with a concept but like always like every time you make something new just write down your ideas just just write down what you think about it write down what where it could go and then Development just it comes, will happen. Yeah, it will happen by itself. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You're already a designer. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah. It's yeah. It's it's just weird to call myself a designer. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's like, it's it's weird, right? Yeah. You know it's that uh, when I applied, I didn't write in my uh, introduction that I'm a designer. Okay. Because I was like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> even though I'm actually designing design, yeah, yeah. things for almost three years now, um, I didn't call myself a designer. And it yeah. took me a while. Now that I'm in school, I call myself a designer. I know that I'm a designer because the way I approach stuff, it's yeah. from a design perspective. And this is like to take a step back, to yeah. know that you're not, from the first moment, know what the end goal yeah. is. This is why you're not a contractor, you're a designer. Yeah. Because a contractor knows that here's gonna be the wall, Here's gonna be the bathroom, here's gonna be this, we're just going towards it. Mm. We are starting with like, actually really interested in that. And after I work with it a while, I will discover something. After I work with it for a while, I will discover mm. something else. And, and that will develop. And this belief that we're gonna exactly. find something, this is the design perspective. Yeah. This is a designer. Yeah. And. Yeah, but what I like about design can be this like, that. The line between art and design is very blurry, you know, because like I, when I when I realized what most people see as a designer, I'm also struggling. Am I a designer? Am I an artist? I don't know. I think I'm something in between, and I think it's super nice that here we have the freedom to to like bring out the artsy side while having like this designer side where you like have to think more about it and like have more concepts, but also kind of like if, if I want to make art, I can make art, right? And then I don't have to explain anything to anyone because it's it's just like it comes from me. It's yeah. not like something that needs a purpose and needs like a reason. So yeah. th that's why that's why I really, really like about design. Can you mean like this line is very like blurry? Um, yeah. yeah. And I think I think some people struggle with it because they think it's not design. It's now it's art. And like, am I an artist? Am I a designer? I don't know. But why do you care if you found something that you like to do? Just you know just do it and yeah you're gonna be successful with probably if you like put your effort and like the heart into it like there's probably no no way around this but but yeah that's what i really appreciate about the space that like the freedom that i feel here is like yeah it's just amazing and once you realize that the teachers are not here to put stones in your way and like tell you it's shit i mean some teachers are rude and it's gonna be like ah this is shit but then like okay, it's his it's his opinion. It's yeah. the same same thing is gonna happen if you're like a designer and you put your work out. There's other probably, designers gonna look other designers, it. other people. There's gonna be enough people gonna say, what, the fuck, what is this yeah. bullshit, right? And then there's enough people who's gonna be like, oh, we really like this, right? Yeah. So like, I think like too many people focus on if someone gives them a negative feedback, there's like the whole world cr comes crumbling. But like if you if you already made the decision to do something. You made the decision already yeah. like why should anybody else have the power to tell you not to do it like if you make the decision to do it do it yeah and if you really want to learn from a negative uh, then you can comment. take it you can take it in you can yeah. think about what this it's like a feedback you take in you're like okay 
he thought about this and that and he thought this was not as good and then you can take the parts that you think make sense and you you put them onto your project but the parts that you think i don't really see the reason why he said this you just leave it out yeah but you have to like just like look at it very objective just like don't get hurt by it just be like oh, okay I, I i see what you're saying i agree with this i don't agree with that and it's all fine because like there's also not a, we don't have like a professor or like a teacher it's, it's fucking designers that come once yeah. a week next to their work come to school and teach us something right yeah so they also don't have like this like social economic learning way of like how to teach students and then it's just you just have to accept it that it's like basically it's just like going out and you ask someone on the street like or you ask someone that you think you like it's, this is a designer and you want to have his opinion you never know what it's going to be but just take yeah take the good things and the bad things and make something out of it yeah exactly yeah and i think there's something very beautiful about the zan academy that there's not a real curriculum yeah exactly it's really you can have you can be in the same year with the same with like same but you students. can even be in the same studio right mm -hmm. because usually like that's what i really like you you get a framework so you get like you get a topic or something but then what you do with it is completely up to you yeah right so like the outcome in the end someone can make a website and the other one makes i don't know a fucking sculpture or a table or whatever yeah. you know like and then if you explain like the two ways and then you're here, here you're like oh yeah it makes sense and it's connected to the topic yeah but it's not like there's not like this is right this is wrong and we gave you an assignment and you have to do this now like it's more like we gave you the framework and we gave you the input and now show us how creative you are and what you can make with this basically and yeah. yeah that's something i really like about it as well but I, i can also see why a lot of people especially young people come from high school struggle with it because there's you just like you get thrown into this pot and it's like there's no more guidance at all it's like yeah. it's your responsibility now and like yeah. you have to do it so yeah it's it's like i mean i think at certain points a little bit more guidance would be nice like also if i want to learn something and like i, I can understand that we're in university and we're grown-ups and we can like look it up on the internet and something but sometimes like i mean i come to class so if you tell yeah. me something I don't understand, please, you know, explain, elaborate, like, and give me a little bit of guidance in that direction, like what I, what I just asked. But, but yeah, but I guess also it makes you more stronger in your own design language and makes you it probably makes you stronger as a designer for afterwards because yeah, you have the tools to like learn new things and you have the tools to because it will always be that way. Exactly, like, I'm, I'm telling you honestly, yeah. I've I've worked. I told it three years in the web design uh, field. Every day, I like I sacrificed thirty minutes to an hour to learn oh. to learn something new. Looking on YouTubers that showing like uh, web trends no. and looking on new ways to deal with clients or to like my program got new features. What what can I do with it? And okay, now it's. Uh, we're not using this kind of uh, CSS, we're using a different one, so how can I apply it to my designs? It's always changing, mm. and the fact that it's always changing, it's making you, you have, you have to know who to ask questions. Oh. And this is what I like about Design Academy, that you have lots of really good designers to ask them questions, but the question have to come from you. No. And yeah, sometimes I oh, like first semester. I cannot judge it really because it's first semester, of first yeah. year. Not a lot happened, mm -hmm. and I also looked for more guidance in terms of like, hey, this is wood. This is how you work with wood. This is how you can make connections. Let's all do ten types of connections today. Yeah. And you will know how to make ten types of connections in wood. In wood, because it will help you in future projects when you want to connect, or hey. This is how you weld metal. This is how you can do it. Um, Bro, one of the first things I would tell anybody who comes to Design Academy, if you want to learn certain things, and you're passionate about it, make friends with the uh, instructors in the workshops. Like, if you are able to make friends with the instructor, like, they're going to help you 
so much and they're like so great. I and, feel it now already on me. Like. Yeah, and I did the big mistake that, I mean, not a big mistake, so like in our first year with COVID, we couldn't really go to the workshops, so the introduction to the workshop was basically non-existent. Oh, wow. And then in the second, third year, it was like, yeah, no, you have to go to the workshop and you have to do it. And I, yeah, I had a huge struggle, I had a huge anxiety going to the workshop because I, w I just, I just, I don't know, I felt so stressed because it seems like everybody who goes to the workshop is like, they know what they're doing, you know? It's like, whoa, it's fucking crazy. Like, and you're just like, they're like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. It's like, oh, a little bit here, a little bit there. But then when you talk to the people, you realize none of them really have a fucking plan what's going on. It's like, you know that this is also like in real life. I work with like companies yeah. that works years in the industry. And then you ask them how they do stuff. And they're like, they're trying. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. And then this moment I realized that no one knows nothing. Yeah. Also, you can see it now in like politics nowadays. They taking us all down people that knows how to lead a country, you know, knows how to take decisions. Yeah. No one knows shit. <laughs> as long as you're going with this kind of attitude, and this is why I'm, how I'm approaching everything. Mm. I don't know shit. I'm gonna ask enough people, I'm gonna process it in my mind, and this is how I'm gonna make a decision, and I'll see if this decision works or not. Yeah. But I don't know shit, I will always know shit. No. All my life, I will just try. But sometimes, you tried something that you already tried, so you're experiencing it. Maybe it's a different it's, situation. It's very true, yeah. Maybe it's a different situation, but it's some, somewhat similar to something that you already already done, so you can make uh, like you, have, a, you already have a, some a base on what you can add on to, yeah. Yeah, but it's always you're gonna know nothing about yeah. what you're gonna do. Yeah. It's always gonna be that way. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. This is something that I really like about designing. But, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I'm looking about this hub of Design Academy, and you, you, you mentioned that like, it's, it's, you find it like a little bit like. Um, hypocrite kind of way sometimes yeah yeah to, to be, and, and this is something that i feel also that this bubble is very innovative in a way it's that's the thing the bubble is everything at the same time like yeah. you have the people who are like you know like fucking focus on what they're doing and they're like going through it and you have the people who are like <laughs> floating through space like don't really know what's going on you have the people who are like doing a little bit of both you have the people who are like just hard workers but don't really know what they're doing and you have the people who like are super lazy but kind of know what they're doing it's like yeah it's, it's all these different things like put, put together in like a spot and then you can help each other right and like yeah the one struggles with stress so like you talk to him about like how you handle the stress and the one struggles with like making it it's like that's the, that's the nice thing about design academy as we, i think as well yeah it's like it's just like these different people doing different things but also having like different personalities and like different feelings and different ways of approaching stuff and it's like not, not stuck on one way and i also like also have struggled with some people like some people i can't connect with at all it's like super hard to yeah. uh, understand their way of working and like understand like, i can't really have like a detailed look into into their world um but it's also super interesting, right? It's just like seeing that there's some something I don't understand that either I want to understand it and like I put I put the effort into how to to talk to these people or like then then makes sense. But yeah, it's also totally fine that like there's all these different people doing stuff yeah. differently. Just accept it and like be cool with it. As soon as it comes to the point where somewhere I have the feeling with some people was like you know like the nose is up and it's like I'm doing something so much better than you then I have a then I have a problem with it yeah but as long as you just do your shit and like I don't have to understand it you don't have to understand my stuff but we just like in the same space and we're creating and like if I have a question that is connected to what you're doing I'm going to come to you and if you have a question that is connected to what I'm doing you can come to me right but yeah it's, it's very different approaches and very different people yeah that's something I really like plus the bubble is still so strong and everybody is so together at some yeah. point and like these amazing parties and i don't know everybody's <laughs> like loving each other and then the next day of school it's like uh, i don't know you but 
<laughs> it doesn't matter. Like it's always, yeah. a, it's always somehow a good, good community, good vibe. Yeah, for sure. What what would what was the thing that you were most surprised about yourself during this study that you found out that was like. Ooh. Um, now reflecting on four years uh, <laughs> I mean I had very different different years also like each of my years was a very different emotion and a very different approach um, but I would say that th the thing that was most surprising that I learned about myself is that um I'm very good at analyzing people and situations and I just figure out what I what how I can position myself in these situations and like to how to explain it. Um, I understand it. I, I feel kind of like I found it also on myself a few years ago, so it's kind of interesting that you're saying yeah, that. Yeah. It's like I just Yeah, I think I'm I could be very good like that's why I also think like working with other people would be so interesting to me because I think once I, someone comes to me, I also really love working on other people's projects. Like if someone yeah. comes to me, it's like I have this and this, and I'm like ten thousand ideas in my head already. Like ba 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 ba. But if I like, I think I can literally like analyze some things very good um, when people come to problems with their problems to me, and then make sense out of it, um, and then try to explain to them what I see and, and like, yeah, just. Just like this together working together or like helping other people is like very very important to me i think and i i think that's something i learned about myself and design academy that yeah also i'm not very egocentric like i i really like my work and i love doing my work and if i'm fucking sure that this is what i want to do like nobody can tell me that it's shit you know that i'm like this but like if it comes to other people's project bro i'm like yeah i'm in it like right away like if you want someone that is like excited <laughs> about what you do and like helps you with something, <laughs> come to me. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. I'm like super down to just yeah think and make stuff with other people. Yeah. That's interesting. That's interesting that you're saying that, and at the same time you you kind of like holding yourself back from opening a studio by yourself. Yeah, be because I don't know. Like sometimes I. I think I have amazing ideas, but for me the, to put in the energy to start a project is usually like, that's my biggest struggle. Like starting a project is to me the hardest thing. And that's why I like working with other people where like if someone else already started a project, once it started, it's, I'm going, right? But like yeah. it's just the start is the hardest, hardest thing for me. And I think like if you do it, if you do something on yourself, you need to like start stuff constantly and like constantly you know bring in new new things and that's why i was like either working with other people or at least working for someone in the beginning is super it's like more interesting to, to just learn and absorb and then like giving my input on other people's work and then i could if i if at some point i'm like oh i think i want to pursue my own design language or my own design idea then i'm going to do it for sure but until then i just like like being in like this this world that someone else created and I can contribute contribute to it yeah and, and do you have any ideas of where you would want to contribute um, so I mean also like I'm not a very digital person so like I definitely need to build and make something so like I was always thinking about yeah like constructing stuff so like furniture building sculpture building like it's also like a mixture of artists and like design um, and then like place wise I mean, I haven't seen much of the world yet. Um, I, I know that I, I feel really comfortable in Europe. Like Europe is like a very safe place, like very like, like yeah, there's like, not much that I think can go wrong in Europe. I mean, even though I think we have a lot of problems as well, I think it's just a very comfortable like space to live in. Yeah. Plus it's just like open borders. You can just travel around. You have all these different countries that you can just yeah, go to and like, no in like a fucking minute basically um and then i mean yeah 
you always hear it, especially in Eindhoven, like, I would love to go somewhere, it's a little bit warmer. <laughs> but then it's like, ah, when do you go, like, Italy, ah, if I want to make fashion, maybe a little bit of furniture, but then you can only go to Milan, and it's like, I don't know if I want to do this. Then I, re I love Portugal. I think the vibe of the country of Portugal is amazing. Like, Lisbon is one of my favorite cities. Also getting super gentrified at the moment, but, um, yeah, I think it's still, like, a very interesting place to be. Um, yeah, but also, like, I'm not really stuck on anything. Like, if someone comes up to me and says, like, yo, I think you're, like, we like what you do and we like you, you want to come work with us here, here, I'm probably going to do it, right? Like, yeah. if I think it's a good match, I'm probably going to do it. I'm, like, very, very much open to, to what's going to happen and where it's going to happen. I'm not really stuck on one place. I probably would move to like Antarctica or like Iceland or something. But <laughs> besides that, I think I'm quite open to 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 go anywhere in the world. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's cool. Even though I only speak two languages fluently, so yeah. yeah English, it's like uh, yeah, it's already enough. You know English, you know. Yeah, for for most for most stuff, it's enough. Yeah, but then sometimes also it's like. For example, if I would go to Japan, I don't know. I wouldn't go to Japan without learning Japanese, I think. Like, yeah, no, that makes um, sense. Yeah. Especially, like, a lot of countries in Asia have traveled yeah. to Asia for six months. It's it's just hard to, like, get around with English, just English, yeah. You can, but only in the most touristic places. Yeah. If you want to go a little bit off the grid, mm. it's... Um, yeah. It's sign language. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what, like, I talked to this with, about someone like this, like... There is a universal language that anybody speaks. You just, it's like, it's also like a confidence of like the way that you communicate stuff. And if, if you go somewhere and the other person doesn't understand, but you like do it in a certain way, just by your energy, most people probably got to still understand what's, what's yeah. going on. Sometimes, yeah. and sometimes you're sitting in a restaurant in <laughs> Vietnam <laughs> when they sell only fried rice and you're like I want fried rice and they're like huh? and you're like god damn it this from the menu what? this from the menu and you literally go into the kitchen you like take the rice and they're like ah ah you sell only fried rice and I'm sitting here in your restaurant and I want to eat <laughs> you know so yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, I've never been to Asia, so I know. <laughs> Amazing. If you are, if like, if you want to delay a little bit, you, you working as a designer, I will really recommend. Well, really recommend. Beautiful culture, beautiful yeah. landscape. The most interesting places I've mm. ever been in my life. Yeah, I kind of stuck with the idea of South America first, but yeah, I mean... It's South not... America, it's all like, both have their... No. I guess that is the thing. Like any, I think anywhere in the world you go, like you're gonna find amazing people and amazing places. And like, both of these places, like Southeast Asia mm. and South America, both gets a lot of travelers, like backpackers. Yeah, yeah. So there you can, yeah, you can find a lot. Um, a lot of people just like travel with for a little bit and help. Travel a little bit or more than a little yeah, bit. Or, yeah. Yeah. There's, uh, there's very interesting people like what they yeah. meet yeah. You know, many different stages in life yeah exactly yeah. many different ideas like um, this this is why I started design in general I was in Sri Lanka for a month and a half okay. and I was like this is the life that I want I want to live here mm. I want to come back to Asia I want to work for my computer I'll make that happen okay. and then I realized that you don't need solely computer work in order to work yeah, no. in other places you yeah. just need a passion that will lead you towards something yeah. and yeah. I hope to find it here like now I'm more into I think it's social design but mm. I'm not really sure mm. um, but yeah design academy opens my mind every day yeah yeah like every day you find out something <laughs> new yeah that's true and you're like whoa what I have never thought of that <laughs> yeah. like, well, that's interesting too but that's, that's I think that's also like a little bit overwhelming sometimes when it's like everything is so interesting and you're like you want to kind of like get to know everything but also at the same time you need to like choose like okay I need to focus on certain things otherwise yeah I'm just gonna go everywhere you know? yeah so yeah that's uh that's a nice way to put it like it's overwhelming 
Some, yeah, sometimes it is for sure. Especially first year, you learn so many stuff. Every day of the week, you learn something completely different. Yeah. <laughs> completely. Yeah. Completely. Like Monday, I'm doing research on wool. Tuesday, I'm drawing. Wednesday, I'm doing this, like podcasting. Yeah. Thursday, I'm doing mapping or mingus, like building sculptures. Yes. Friday, I'm doing fucking metal work. Yeah, I really don't to... get why they switched it up. Like, we had three different trimesters with three different focus points. So we had, like, society and change, but a little bit more political and, like, environmental stuff. Then we had crafts industry, which is, like, more of the industry side and, like, making stuff. And then we had body and mind, which is more, like, focusing on yourself. Like, where do my creat where does my creativity come from? And that made sense to me. Um, then some people were complaining that it's, like, too much separate and they want to have the direct comparison, but, like... You just wait another trimester and then you have the direct comparison yeah. but yeah i feel now it's like um it's like a circular kind of like train stations that every day you go from this train and then whoop, a week and it's again the same yeah okay and yeah. then you like and then you gradually <coughs> building up yeah um but coordinate coordinating everything it's uh, it's hectic yeah. it's very hectic to learn so many things yeah. at the same time yeah. and yeah, but I don't know, kind of interesting. Like, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I mean, I also like I did first year kind of different. Like for me, first year was like, like I just met so many people. I was like, I just met new people every day. <laughs> and I was like, I was here, I was there, I was everywhere. I was just like not in school that much. I mean, for us, it was also different because it was the first like proper COVID year. And the, the school didn't know what's going on. We yeah. didn't know what's going on. So like, I think for us, first year was a little bit easier than it used to, definitely easier than it used to be and it's probably also easier than this, what it is now so for us it was just i mean for, at least for me we also had people in our year that were still super stressed and i was also it's a decision what you make to me first it was more like um i just want to try and see what i like and see what i don't like and then the stuff that i don't really like i'm not going to put that much effort and i'm going to put enough effort into like pass but i'm not not going to put my all into it so like I kind of made the, yeah. the separations of like what do I really want to do and what don't I really want to do. So, yeah, I kind of found my way through it. Let's say. Um, let's let's dive a little bit on your uh, graduation projects. Yeah, sure. Um, so your first project is like one of them. Yeah, it's like upcycling, upcycling projects. Yeah, because like last semester I did the textile focus, mm -hmm. um, and. I don't know, like, we also had this talk with uh, people from Symphony, who I taught the company who collects all the, like, donated clothing. Um, and I, I think the textile industry is one of the industries that creates so many problems in this world. Um, but when you look at it, it's, in my opinion, it's actually quite simple to change. If there wouldn't been the aspect of how can we make as much money as possible, um, I feel like in the textile industry you can you can change stuff very easily, very fast. And I just want to focus on um, also since I know like how many how much we as humanity already produced, like we produced especially textiles, we produced in this street here. You can maybe give clothes to half of the population in Angola yeah. on what they have in the stores. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's insane. How much clothes they have? Yeah, and then in when you one think about, street, then when you think about what goes to landfills, what goes to second hand stores, what goes here, what goes where, it's just like. And so I made like this collection last semester that was kind of like, um, you could protest every day. So I made this jacket where you could put patches on, like with Velcro, that like kind of pro, like you protest every day. So you saw like fuck fast fashion and like, like and then you could also. It was built and community building as well, so everybody could make their own patches and then you exchange the patches and you kind of like, like wear the other people's um, mm. opinions and sayings yeah. on yourself as well. Um, and this kind of transition now to like that I want to make more fashionable pieces still with the idea of revolting against this massive industry that is just, yeah, having a, so much negativity in it. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's a fucking multi-billion or trillion dollar company, like, industry, but 
and they all do the same yeah. they all do the same yeah, like then especially with fast same. fashion and then like to me like i th think that's also one of the things that changed me a lot like when i realized during covid like when i went to school and i passed by primark and like these fucking people like had nothing better to do than stand in line in front of primark for an hour to fucking buy a two euro fifty white t-shirt i'm like to, to it's it's just fucking <laughs> mind blowing to me. I just say like it's I don't I really don't get it. Like yeah. it's it's just and if you just look at it, just like you don't even have to be a super smart person. You have to read into it. It's so obvious what is going wrong and like this overconsumption in our so like yeah. I, I think also that's a big thing. Like I like shoot so much against capitalism. Like it just. It makes sense because it makes the world run at the moment, but and it's very hard to change the approach because everything is running on the on the principle of capitalism. And materialism. Material, more, yeah, I would say I would say it's more like capitalism. I I agree on the on the. I mean, materialism side. and capitalism kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, they go hand the hand constant hand. need of having all these things in your life fuels yeah. the capitalistic approach and of the like, innovation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, so yeah, that's why I'm just I'm just. It's like yeah we can so this is going to be like an exploration of like we can still make fashionable pieces by not and i i get that recycling is super hard because the way that we make clothes but we have so many clothes that then don't recycle them upcycle them right so like i make this upcycled fashion collection basically and um then i want to kind of show where the clothing is coming from that i'm using and um, i have a couple of ideas for photo shoots where like i'm going to shoot it like in um like the symphony is this this uh, this company that is also here and has this huge like um, collecting facility in Eindhoven and if you go into this room and it's just one one tiny thing of this whole like the industry and there's so much so many materials it's insane it's like it's a whole like it's fucking a it's in, it's it's huge. It's like mind blank. It's like what the fuck is going on? And then yeah, and so I just I just that's just something I want to focus on, and I just want to show that. But I also want to bring people back to have this. To to want to make stuff themselves, right? Because everybody's going digital now. Everybody's like, oh, I want to be. I don't know. I want to make money. I want to be. I don't know. I'm gonna be drop shipping. I'm gonna be drop shipping. Exactly. I'm gonna make money with Amazon. I'm gonna do this that. Like fine but then like like i think like creativity and like the making process to me is also like a very much healing process like i i also had to fight a lot with depression as well in the last couple of years and stuff but like once i sit down and make and i get in, kind of like into the zone and like just like you you learn so much you learn like the heart uh, like eye hand coordination like it's good for your body it's good for your brain you focus on something but you also kind of you um, if you if you really like what you're doing, you get completely lost. You know, like I of, I often when I'm like really into something, it's almost like I'm on airplane mode, right? Like my yeah. brain is not really there. Like I'm fully focused on this one thing and I'm doing it, but I'm also not actively, constantly thinking about it. It's like it's like something that automatically happens, and I think it's very th therapeutic and like very like calming. And I don't know. I mean, back in the day, okay, it was it was women mainly but every woman could sue right now who can sue right it's like the people who are super interested in it but i feel like everybody can take so so much of it and it's so easy to especially with your clothing right oh i i lost some weight uh i need to buy new pants no you don't need to buy new pants you you literally need to make three stitches and yeah. you have a fucking different fat fitting pants right so it's also i want to show people these ways as well that i think there's so much more to making yourself than oh I'm, how I'm, you value yeah like, something oh it just means you're broke because you have to <laughs> fix your clothes like no it just means that i have i think about stuff and like i love i love the making yeah i love the make exactly and right to make i, I well. think it's a very beautiful approach to design in general yeah. and how to communicate with people and how to change people in a sort of way no that it's to change the idea behind where you're heading exactly yeah and how you can influence huge industries by just make a person value his own craftsmanship yeah yeah or 
especially in the textile industry. Like I talked to also with a friend of mine who um, does a lot of research into the fashion industry as well, and she like, just said that it's like the like if you go back, like you start with the designer maybe he's gonna make okay money but then once you start the production line basically each step the value of the piece doubles because in the beginning the person is basically getting paid nothing then the second person who creates the next piece of the garment yeah adds value to it adds value to it adds value to it and then the end you have a piece that is that someone makes I don't know, 200 euros with but the first person only made 20 cents off of it it's like it's yeah. such a imbalance that yeah. it's like it's it's crazy like it's it's insane and like yeah and you you like you don't even need to pay the first person like the same stuff that you get but if you fucking pay him fairly or her like it's it's, it's such a small step and it's like okay you won't make billions anymore you probably want to make millions it's like why do we need to have more and more and more and more? And that's also the consumerism where like the people who are rich, like show you, oh my God, you need more and more and more. So the other people think they need more and more and more. So everybody just constantly wants more and more and more and more. And we kind of lose the connection to what actually makes us human. Like actually yeah. like it's it has nothing to do with it. Like I think communities kind of get destroyed. I don't know, just like that's something I really like about design camp is like this togetherness, right? Because I feel like in a lot of places when you just move somewhere, like I, don't, I feel like I don't know. Back in the day, I, people would just go on the street and they would like they know their neighbors, they would have dinners together and stuff. And I don't know, it get kind of lost now. And all the stuff that we love about the world is the like you go to Africa, you see these masks that they are making, yeah. you see the clothing, you see yeah. the fabrics. It's all it was all because of the things that were available how they did it yeah and then you go to eastern europe different stuff different stuff you go yeah. to asia different stuff but now we it's all want like yeah. now we all want like oh but this is beautiful because everyone thinks it's beautiful but hey you love your mom's food because this is what her parents did and this is what their parents did yeah. and this is what makes you who you are yeah and now we don't want to show who we are yeah. we want to show who we are like exactly and there's this huge contradiction everybody is like oh, i i want to be myself i want to be like a personality but you kind of lose your personality because you are like everybody else yeah or you want to be like everybody else and i mean i understand that approach because if you look at social media and stuff and just see Oof, all these like beautiful the people thing. and like having fun all day long you know like living these amazing lives and like just like yeah like, this is what i need right and it's like why like where is this coming from like why do you need all this shit it's like there's no reason for it and i mean i understand that there's pleasure in certain certain things and i probably also it's always hard to say because then it's like, okay, what would you do if you're rich, right? Yeah. I mean, I guess I would live a little bit different, like a li little different lifestyle for sure, and I would probably also buy new clothing every now and then if I think something is really nice. But like, I would, I would still not go to H and M and buy myself fifty T-shirts because I don't want to wear a new T-shirt every day and I don't want to wash them. You know, I'm yeah. just gonna throw them away afterwards. It's like this Dr. Dre's theory, like, oh, I'm gonna buy 2,000 Air Forces so every day I can wear a new pair of Air Forces. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is happening? You're like having problems that like our shoes are creased. No, your shoes need to be clean and perfect. Yeah. And like, bro, it's fucking shoes. I'm walking on the fucking street. I love shoes. Like, don't get me wrong, I love shoes. Like, I, I could buy shoes every day, but. To tell me like, oh yeah, you bought these shoes and now you should put them in the fucking uh, shelf. So in 10 years, they might be 5,000 euros. Like if I want to do investments, then yeah, it's like it's all go and become end, a broke. Yeah, it's, it's at the so end, the money, like the idea that we live life in order to build more capital yeah. is this is capitalism. What you're saying, it's, yeah. it's horrible. It's, it's kind of weird. It's horrible. Yeah. And I understand the 
the comfort that money brings you in terms of like when shit goes down. No. But in COVID, we saw that shit were going down and it didn't matter if you had a lot of money or not because but also then like during COVID, that was for me the prime example of like how much we lost humanity because like people would go to the supermarket and fight over fucking toilet paper yeah. and buy it in like I need 20 packs of toilet paper like for what? since when? like how much do you shit? is it, is it like, is the new COVID that you like yeah. constantly shit? like what is going on? And also you can wash it with your fucking hand if yeah. like worst case scenario yeah plus you like know? look plus like if shit really goes down would you rather have a fucking shit ton of money that saves you or would you like have to have like people around you that like help each other right yeah. you would rather have these people around you that like give you the safety or the, comf the comfort of like oh okay i know i have these people around me that i can trust and i know that they're gonna help me and they know i'm gonna help them but this doesn't exist when we start a new movement peopleism people, people <laughs> <laughs> when we believe in people you know exactly like believe in people yeah believe in people believe in again. people and not believe in the money that will bring me yeah confident because it, it would never like we see all these rich as people after 20 years of success they're like money didn't brought me nothing no. i was alone i was lonely not just alone i was also lonely i felt yeah of course i felt this pressure i felt all these kind of human problems that money will never solve but at the end we want more money to, let's say, if I'm relating it to your project, because I want new pair of saw, a new pair of shoes, a new yeah. pair of pants, a new yeah. pair of shirt, a new shirt, because this will bring me in the society. I will look like the society that I want to be in. Yeah, but also like it's like this achievement thing, right? You always like you want to achieve something, and once you like rich rich like you still want to achieve something and then they, you're like i need more and more and more and more that's why i i don't get why rich people don't fucking just give back you know it's like oh my god i made the money because all of you exist and i won't even be able to spend all this money in my lifetime put it back where it's actually needed but no 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 i need to make i need to make more and more and more yeah and more and more and, more. and yeah and it's uh yeah i mean i like i like i also like making beautiful things right I, I love making beautiful things i love making stuff that is fun and maybe it's not necessary to to make so right but i don't know if i want to make something um that is harming people and harming nature and harming my environment i don't know like this is not what i want to do right yeah and this, and, and this is like like the sole issues that humanity now facing are these kind of things yeah that basically yeah small amount of people holds a lot of capital same almost people that owns a lot of capital harming the environment yeah. influence us all but we keep on contributing to their they efforts to fuck us all to make more money for in order to us to feel like ooh. I'm, I'm feeling good. I have this like, uh, look at my sofa. It's like 3,000 euros, yeah. you know? Like, look how comfortable it is. Fuck you in your sofa, <laughs> first of all. Fuck you in your new shirt. Like, what have you done lately in order to, to contribute? Like, have you planted a tree? Have you grow your own corpse? Have you tried to down your, your electricity consumption? Like, have you ever, have you done something for for the future that it's not your pocket mm. or your status no. like why pocket and status became so mainly rooted in our society i guess because the people who have all the money and the power they basically build the hamster, they build the hamster wheel that we're running in mm -hmm. and they just like we can't look left, we can't look right, we just see this constantly spinning basically and we like, we just run. This is why I hate social media because I think that social media give focus on the wrong stuff. Yeah, for sure, for like, sure. And, 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 and it's, it's so sad to see the narrative of the world 
be based on how many likes this post got. Yeah, but on what's viral. Exactly. That's the bad side. At the same time, it also has a positive side of that it gives you so many possibilities, right? You can promote yourself, you can promote yeah. your brand, you can like. If, then if this one person who's already famous likes your shit, suddenly everybody likes your shit and oh my god, in two days you're, you're, you're famous as well, right? Like it gives you a lot of possibilities, but in general what it does for society, it, it doesn't do anything for society. It, 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 it do a lot, yeah. it, it's do, it's do yeah, very it, much bad stuff because... Exactly, it, basically it's all negative input. Yeah, this exposure that you're talking about comes after hours of someone spending on nothing yeah. I'm like maybe he will like because he's following someone that shout out you for your work he saw hundred different things that influence exactly. his thinking of continuing going to this Primark and getting his shirt because he have no time to buying a fine a fucking sewing machine and sew his own clothes yeah but not even this right I don't like not to say that you have to sew, sew, sew your own clothes but if I'm completely honest, what is the point? You you go to Primark and like you you go to social media, right? And you look at all these people. First of all, none of them who you think are cool are probably gonna wear Primark. Like none mm -hmm. of them. Yeah. But Primark just produces the cheap version for you that you that everybody can buy in, in bulk and you can buy five of that. So like if one breaks, you know, you just take the next one. I mean, except so is it even something breaks or smells like shit after one use yeah they use the worst fabrics like synthetic shit nothing, nothing there makes sense like <laughs> nothing and it's such a it's such a hype hype I, I don't know like when the first store came to germany it was like two hours away from my home hometown people would fucking go for two hours to go to primark i was like what the fuck is going on <laughs> like it, like it, yeah it was just yeah, it was just horrible, horrible shit. And then, yeah, you look to social media, and then when I think about, it, you want to be an individual person, right? Why not? Like, I don't know why, it's like, so many people, and I mean, it's getting less and less people now, but like, there was this big perception that like, if you shop secondhand, you're poor. Yeah. Like, first of all, it's just a choice that I'm making because it just makes more sense to buy a secondhand. Plus. If you find a nice piece in a second-hand store, you're way more individual, you're probably way cooler, and like, everybody's gonna be like, whoa, where the fuck did you get this piece? And you're gonna be yeah. like, yeah, I, you don't get this piece because I just found it in that second-hand store. There's another, there's a lot of cool shit in it, but it's also like, you create your own, own style more and more if you go second-hand shopping, or like, you, you, you get, you look, even if you look through your grandparents' basements, right? And because style always repeats. Yeah. Like if you look at style influences now, like they all come from the eighties, nineties, two thousand, some even from the seventies, you know, it's like we already did all this shit. We already had it all. Like yeah. and there's so much of it still existing because back in the day we still knew how to create quality products. Yeah. And that we were, last forever. Exactly. So like now we're buying this bullshit that doesn't last forever, that is produced in the most horrible way and basically doesn't give anything to anyone even though we have those things a better quality that already existed for yeah for so long and this is where where values come come in in, in the play that our values changed a lot yeah. in the in the last century I would say for sure and I think that we need to kind of not change them again, but yeah, to change them back to how we value a person, how we value an economy, how we value ourselves. And yeah, but look, we, we learn so much from our history. Basically, all we, we learn, learn is from the from history. Yeah, that's, that's so the thing. sad. That's the thing. <laughs> You're like, you go to school and you learn everything about what happened in your country in, like, in the last hundred years and you learn about this and then like, okay, uh, uh, there's nothing to do with nowadays. But why not? Why are we not learning of like the mistakes we made, of the positive things we made and we keep these things and like make sense of it and i get that there were different times with different yeah, values but also i guess the whole like 
part where like look now we're a globalized world right yeah. we, now we all work together but now it's more complicated than back in the day where everybody would just fucking work for themselves like how is that possible like now should everything should be way easier should be way fairer and should be like way more evenly distributed because it's not like everybody every country just works yeah. for themselves because we should work together now but still no people at some point are like oh, how can i get richer than the one next to me it's like and i i, I think it's very much uh depends on survivalness because nowadays you don't need to work hard no. in order to survive no. and we have penicillin you know we have good food in the supermarket I don't know if it's that good, you know, like, but you have unlimited amount of yeah. food that almost like reachable everywhere. Mm. If you find the most easiest job, you can live. Mm. You will not die. Mm. You will not starve to death. If your family will exclude you, you will be able to survive. You know, there were times that if your family didn't care for you, you will die oh. probably in the next few years. And I think that once we ended this survival mode, we became a new type of human that, sur that his survival mode is more so about his status. Yeah. And how we can change, <clears throat> this is what in interesting me in design, this, how can we change this values? I even brought something for inspiration. Yeah. Music. This is the easiest shit ever, right? And like, it's basically, my, my parents gave me this for when I started uh, Design Academy. These are the 10 rules of design from Dieter Braun. You know? They're so simple, they're so easy, and they exist already for, I don't know, like 60 years now. And this guy also has influenced so many modern day like designers, like Apple and all these people, they all love Dieter Braun. Like, he's like, this is fucking genius and it's so simple if you just like design wise live by these 10 rules at least for product design it's all we need yeah i don't I, like i can see five things that that now they biggest designs design like selling products are not following you know no yeah. like long lasting um thorough to the last detail of oh, yeah <laughs> environmentally friendly yes <laughs> as little design as possible it's like like most of the things that we're now following are and and you can see them in the streets you know you can see them in the streets you can see them when you walk yeah. and you can see what people wear and you can see what people appreciate and it's it's so twisted oh. to what we need. Yeah. It's it's kind of incredible how we how we what we actually need is like it's it's even simple stuff as like when I tell to people that I don't shower every day, some people look at me like what? <laughs> Are you disgusting? I'm like, bro, I don't live in the tropics, I live yeah. in the fucking Netherlands. Like I wear good clothes, like my body is working normally. Like, yeah. why the fuck should I do? But it's like, then someone in society looks at you weird because you don't do certain things mm -hmm. like everybody else. Yeah. But at the same time, you want to be your own person. I'm like, it's like, just. But also, I think that like, it's so hard for people to accept people are different mm -hmm. and just be like. I accept that you're different from me. It's totally fine. We still coexist. We can even do stuff together, but we just have to accept that we're different. This is what I don't like about social media. And you brought it up perfectly because yeah. social media is about who won. Yeah. Who won the conversation? Yeah. Who won Who's the... Who's the hero of the story? Yeah. Who's the hero of the story? Who won the conversation? Who made... Who um, brought as many as people as he can to support his cause, this is the right. And when did we agree as human species that there is one right 
on everything. That's like, when, did, like, I didn't, I don't remember someone saying that to no. me, but it feels like it. I mean, yeah, the thing is, it always was like this. Back in the day, people would just start killing each other if, like, the one person was like, oh, I hate your God. The other was like, no, I hate your God. I mean, we still do still it. Do. We still do it. We still do it. We still fucking do it. <laughs> <laughs> we still, very true, we still do it. But, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like, hmm, is it good or is it bad that we're so much smarter these days? That we know so much more, you know? Like, it feels like back in the day, you know? We know so much more about what, bro? The Homo sapiens 100,000 years ago knew about plants and about trees and about corpses. Yes. Like a master degree in biology yep. that yeah. maybe Fair. less than 0.001% of the world population knows. Yeah, okay. And he took a corn that was this size. Do you know that corn came from this size? No. This is what the size of the corn uh -huh. that we now like corn, like a fucking yeah, corn. Yeah, yeah. It was this. It's like and we been. somehow managed to take this size, understand how valuable it is, and to make it grow bigger and bigger and bigger in thousands of years. Mm -hmm. And I think that knowledge is way more appreciable than if you know the whole lineup of uh, Los Angeles Lakers and the NBA and you know how many goals Ronaldo scored last year or you know who won the last uh, your uh, the, the, like Bro, it's, it's like the it's like the Hungry Games it's like the old Roman Empire <laughs> you know you give the people the games yeah so they don't ask questions it's yeah. like, oh, we entertain you all day long. We give you all this shit that you don't need, but you're going to enjoy it. Yeah. So you stop thinking about the stuff that you actually should be thinking about. Yeah. That's just... Yeah, and we give so much space to problems that are not the main focus of the world. Let yeah. me, like, one of them that I know it's very controversial, it's gender. I literally want to say the same thing, but I was like, oh, can we say this on a Design Academy podcast? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is, it is, it is we're, so necessary, yeah. It's something that should be just accepted. Accepted, yeah. yeah. And if someone else is not accepting it, like, why? It's his fucking problem. Exactly, like, but also, why do, like, why do I have to care what someone else is doing? Like, why yeah. do I care if someone else decides, oh, I'm not a he, I'm a they, them, or I'm a she now. Like, be. Just be. Like, I'm happy that who, you're on yourself. Am, who am I to tell you what to do and not to do? Like, this is to me, this is like this, like, like we create this, like, oh, this is right, this is wrong. But then other people create another right and wrong. And like, I mean, this is the easiest, like, look at how successful a lot of like YouTube and podcasts are right now that like are either like, these alpha males or like these super feminists wow. and then the best thing is when they collide and it's just like it's like these pure fights obviously the alpha males only invite stupid uh, feminists so in their talk show it just looks like oh my god all the feminists are fucking stupid as fuck and then the feminists only invite stupid as alpha males and it's like the same thing and, and we just, all live in the middle none of none of us is on the edges exactly and we can focus together like are you they them can you help me bring the values that we all love about who we are and who we are truly are no. to the table, let's do it. Because yes. my way of doing it is to care about the environment. I grew up in a house when my dad, I couldn't walk with him in the street. Every piece of trash that he saw, he put up in the trash. Okay. Yeah. Like to walk with him on the street was a pain in the ass. <laughs> and everything, like we, we, we fixed everything in our house by ourselves yeah. never call any any handyman and by the time that i finished the army i literally did electricity points in my in my room because i wanted to change the ladder i was like yeah i'm just gonna break this wall i'm gonna take this wire i'm gonna put it in the wall i'm gonna do like a socket there i'm gonna do a socket here i'm gonna repaint everything i'm gonna rebuild the wall no problems mm. and for for me this is the way of who i'm being myself and if someone gonna judge me for that, I'll be like, fuck you. The same for gender. I want to kiss a guy, I want to kiss a girl, I'm a chair, 
I'm an alien. Yep. I am a he, she, they, them. Yeah. Be but it. Be it. Inherit it. Love it. And don't care if someone looks at you in a, in a weird eye. If they do do that, face them. Yeah. And if someone will tell me that, that I'm like a cheap or dangerous to society because of something like that, I'll be like, bro, you're an insane person. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You're an insane person. And I'm sure, sure that you don't represent the majority of society. No. Probably. And the majority of society, yeah, I know that extreme, 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 extreme right wing people and religious people will do problems and yes like in many 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 countries we still don't accept gay marriage and transgender uh, rights and yeah it's something that we should fight for 100 percent and it's also, it's, it's also not the most important problem in the yeah, world. That's a, yeah we literally might all gonna die yeah. in 50 years because of the environment yeah. let's focus on that for a second <laughs> but yeah <laughs> Let's focus on the fact that we're killing each other yeah. because of land still. Let's focus on a second on the fact that if I don't agree with someone, I can actually make my life, they can make my life miserable yeah. because I believe in something else. And it's not only about gender, like me being an Israeli in this school is very hard. It's very, very hard. There's people that not looking me in the eyes. Really? In school. Yes. There's people that didn't, that was my friends before the 7th of October and since the 7th of October, they don't even speak to me. People that associated with me in the school are getting less social invites really? to other. Yes. Yes. Yeah, was, oh yes. And you look at that and it's the same people that fight for gender equality. Yeah. And I'm saying... It's not about gender equality. It's about human equality. It's about humans. Let's yeah. fight for for values. Yeah. And my values maybe not be your values, but let's look at what we need as human species. We need more acceptance. Let's do it in all yeah, ways. But also just because you are from somewhere that doesn't make you a certain person, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> Like, we can't just say now, okay, uh, Israel is doing something bad. Every Israeli person is, is like, is dangerous. Like, oh, what the fuck? Like, it's the same, like, as if, like, I mean, well, when I went to Canada, and then, like, not in Canada, where when I, like, certain, like, when I went to Turkey or something like this, but how many people would ask me about, like, oh, so what about Adolf Hitler? I'm like, bro. What the fuck? Like, <laughs> I'm fucking, dude, I'm 20 years old. Like, I have, like, I, I know about him. I read about him. I saw some videos about him. But that's basically, I know, I'm as much connected to him as you are, right? Like, yeah. And there's, like, it's it's just too, like, yeah. But, like, still, a lot of people, the first thing they connect to Germany is the fucking, like, the, the guys, yeah, the Holocaust, yeah. So it's it's like, like, bro, well, yeah, we it was a horrible thing. We learned from it. It's a good thing that we learned from it. Let's let's fucking make yeah. it not happen again. And what are we doing now? We're almost doing the same shit again. Like, yeah, bro, like, what the fuck is like, yeah. And it's literally this thing, like this idea about this matter in particular, that now as a Jew in the world, I. I feel it. I feel anti-Semitism. I've never felt it in my life. I heard about it. I thought it's happening mm. somewhere no. far away from me. Mm -hmm. But now I feel it. I feel that people judge the way that I'm thinking about this particular conflict, mm. about what's happening now. And they don't see me as a human being. They see me, again, as something very low that can suffer as long as he's staying, like, shush. Like, he yeah, suffers now. Yeah, that's the problem, you know? Like, um, I also just had this thing where, like, I kind of got out of this friend group, um, or, like, we just, we just kind of got our own ways because, like, they were like, yeah, we don't really see us gaining something from this friendship because I think we have different values in life and, like, we go a different direction. Like, yeah, that's a fair, fair. Like, we don't have to be the closest friends, but like, if we do stuff together, you know, we have a good time. You know, like, it's just like the vibes between us. That's that's great. And yeah, probably I don't wanna don't wanna be in the same room as a like fucking neo Nazi that wants to kill I don't know like people who come on refugee boats. Of course I don't want to. 
but it doesn't make the person if you interact with them directly someone that you just can't respect at all anymore right yeah. like you know just just like don't 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 try to make sense of what he's saying but at least listen to him at least it's like if you if you really like want to exclude someone at least talk to him first or yeah. her, right fucking talk have this exchange and afterwards if you still decide okay i don't want anything to do with this person anymore okay but just 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 being like mm, i heard this or i heard that or look did you see what he posted or did you see what he said i'm not gonna do anything like as long as you didn't talk to the person i think you shouldn't like you should never make this decision completely based on upon just a general feeling where they again can, like, social media problems yeah social media problems For sure. and it's and this is why i think social media is one of the worst things that happened to humanity for sure and look even we are struggling with it and, and yeah. we grew up where there weren't even smartphones yeah and imagine the next generation that like literally had the smartphone they were from when they were in their head yeah our kids gonna gonna be half cyber 100 probably yeah probably yeah if we're not gonna change how we act right now yeah and it's not gonna change no because the three most powerful people in the world are all connected to yeah, yeah elon musk mark zuckerberg and jay bezos they all push us into that direction yeah of being a half cyborg yeah to fight our own humanity biological systems with computer yeah let's fuck up earth and move to mars no yeah basically so simple. small small amount of people will move to mars uh, the one that have a lot of money and then again we're coming back to this idea of so why do we value money so much if we will never have enough for be these people that will go to mars at the end we're gonna stay here and watch the the earth be without water you know too hot to to live like we're gonna be these people we're gonna look at these stores with all the clothes and we'll be yeah. like, we don't need those. No. It's, it's just, too fucking hot. <laughs> it's the same with us being like now, oh my God, all these refugees are coming. Bro, wait 10 more years and then you can't live in certain parts of Africa, South America anymore, certain parts of Asia, you can't live there anymore. Where do these people go? Yeah. <laughs> they will come here <laughs> or like somewhere where they can live. And then you can maybe talk about the problem. Right now there is no problem. There's a couple of people coming here. And if you just wouldn't try to work against it, but just trying to incorporate them, it would fucking work. And also the people that don't understand migration, do you think the people that migrate actually wanted to leave their country, leave their house, leave their neighbors, mm -hmm. they, their friends, to go on a boat or a plane to a whole new country? Mm -hmm. Do you think they wanted it? They would prefer to stay where they are. Yeah. They will prefer not to migrate. Really prefer. And yeah, for sure. if you cannot put yourself in their shoes, you basically like and this like when, when we talk about people like not accepting yeah. other people, it's not starting with it, it starts with accepting that we're all on the same boat going towards the same end that it's death and yeah. we're all gonna die and at the end we are trying to make a living meet nice people have good conversations learn a little bit about who we are and yeah. what our role in this world and then go back to nature yeah. and give our body back to the <laughs> ecosystem and and on that way if you are focusing so much about hating someone mm. about canceling someone you're wasting so much you're not celebrating diversion mm. you are literally ruining the only thing that's beautiful about human beings that we're not the same hippo this like hippo in in different kind of like different parts of Africa, it's the same fucking hippo. Yeah. We're not. Celebrate it. Yeah. Celebrate it. Be happy with it. And 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 this is something that I'm I'm it's very hard for me to understand how 
how we can decide on other people problems so uh, so harsh mm. when it's not our problem exactly no. like it, it's not it's not my problem mm. like I have my own problems I will try to decide them but them. at the same time also like <clears throat> obvious of course I have my own problems but at the same time also like if someone else comes with a problem to you just fucking help them yeah like be be helpful be there like do what you can if you can do something then do it you know like it's like human approach of like uh, i just i have all my own problems and i can't help anybody else like it's also also untrue because like you don't have to like make someone else's life better but like do what you can to make everybody around you having a, like a better life or like a more high, higher quality life, whatever you want to tell, say it, but like, it's like, be a, a singular human being while still being part of the community and the social construct. And I feel like this, like being part of the community and being part of the social construct is getting more and more disconnected. Because we're trying to live in some else's people's shoes yeah. that lives thousands of kilometers from us yeah. instead of understanding that human interactions happens with the first cycle of people that surround you, your close family, your close friends, people that live close by to you. Then the second cycle of people that surround you, that like um, service, uh, service people that around you, like the... the, the I don't know how you say it in English, but the, the, the people that work in the supermarket and the people that work in the stores. People yeah. Yeah. And, and then you have the third people that like once in a while kind of interactions yeah. that are like governmental employees and, and, and public transportation. And this is the third cycle. And these are the only cycles that we can actually influence influence the ones that are too far away probably we don't know enough probably most probably yeah. we don't know enough and if we all kind of like make our circles better and better and better and better and better mainly the first and second cycle mm. it will have a huge impact mm. huge 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 impact and then also your life will be much simpler and and this is what I, I I'm I'm trying to think also in Design Academy how I can how I can go into this like way of I want my design to bring people together mm. but I don't want my designs to bring someone from the edge of the world with someone else from the edge of the world. I want my designs to to make you go to your neighbor, mm. you know? To know who lives around you, to go to your parents, to go to your close family, close friends, and make this connection stronger. Because this is what will make your life longer, happier, healthier. These are the people that are gonna, that at the end gonna take care for you. And yeah, yeah, I have a lot of to say about social media. I really, I really affecting affected by it for sure. I mean, we all are, and I mean, I even realize sometimes, like, if I'm in my bed at night and I just, I can't stop scrolling sometimes, you know, it's like, literally, like, uh, you're mm -hmm. stuck to it, and it's like, you probably even watched the video that you already watched fucking ten times, but you're gonna watch it again. Yeah. Because it's like, this, like, this, like, like, small amount of pleasure that your brain makes you think you have, and, yeah, 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 that's, uh, Topic, but it's just very intense. So, the, to me, but to me, for example, that's one of the biggest issues that I have with like even anybody basically that I'm around. It's like usually when I'm with people, I put my phone away and I leave it, and unless I'm at a party and I want to make like a photo or something, then yeah. I'm making maybe taking it out. But like usually, if I'm somewhere. And it's not like a hangover Sunday where, just, where we all just hang on the couch. Then it's okay that you're on your phone, no problem. But like if I spend time with you, 
and you constantly value your time on your smartphone more than the time you spend with me, uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I understand. I really don't like this, you know, and uh, yeah. And so people starting watching videos, and you just see like, blah, 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 and you're like, <laughs> we're here, we can talk, we can interact, we can do anything, you know, like, why do you have to be on your phone at that moment? Yeah. But I can also understand the addiction to it that, like, it's so easy, it's so tangible, it's right there, it's, you know what you get, and like, yeah. This, this is why I also wanted to, to a little bit like shift my way from designing websites. Because I was like, am I really going to contribute to this world uh, my whole life? Uh, going to be based on people getting stuck in their computer? Uh, like I call it also a computer, like a phone. I mean, it is a computer. It's a computer. Yeah. Like, am I going to be this kind of person <coughs> that don't like this system, mm. but actually contributing to it so much? No. No. It also became such a big part of everybody's life so fast. And you have to think about like, I think I got my first like smartphone in like this when I did the second time eighth grade. So I was like fifteen or something like this. Me too. So when I got my first smartphone, I was like, whoa, what a world! That was crazy. My first one f smartphone was uh, BlackBerry. <laughs> okay, no, my mine was like an iPhone four. That was my first phone. But also before that, because my parents were like, "No, you, no, you're not gonna get one." Also, like, it's way too much money to just give a fucking kid. A Fifteen fucking... years old. Yeah, like even even people even kids in elementary school now run around with fucking iPhone twelve, and I'm like, bro, like if I would be a fucked up guy i would just stand in front of elementary school and just like stop give me your phone <laughs> stop, give stop. Me your phone like just like just fucking take all the phones from all the kids you know like yeah. who's gonna stop me like, yeah it's it's like and it's like yeah so i can reach my kid and i know where it is you know fucking nokia yeah like put a fucking air tag on him i don't know like what the fuck I, but like but like just like yeah but then you can like i don't get it also one of the things that makes me the most aggressive is like when I see parents and like walking with their kids and they're constantly on their phone and like, I'm like, why did you have this kid? Yeah. What is the point? Like, <laughs> what is this kid learning from you right now? Like that there's always like this weird ass thing in between us that there's no like proper like social interaction because this is more important like this. So the kid already from day one learns, oh my God, it's so important to be on this the magic. phone. Yeah, it's like, it's insane. And then like in the restaurant when like kids sit in front of their fucking iPads. Oh and my God. I'm like, I'm like, please, please go home and have food at home. If you want your kids to watch iPad, do it at home, but like don't go to rest. And if you, if you want to go to a restaurant, and fucking teach your kids how to have manners in a restaurant. Yeah. Like if your kid can't sit still at the table, you probably fucked up as a parent. Yeah. Like. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. the iPad is not gonna fix this. No. Like it, it's it's not gonna happen. But it's it's of course it's an easy tool to like Shut make them up. shush. Yeah. yeah. But that's it. And yeah, it's like and every time I see it, I was like, I'm so, like it makes me so angry. I would love to scream at them and just like. Yo, wake the fuck up, you know, like, there's your fucking kid, like, teach him something, like, show him something, I don't know, but, like, stop being on your fucking phone all the fucking time, and, I mean, I, 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 I say these things, and at the same time, I'm probably also way too much on my phone, like, yeah, but it's no the, doubt yeah. about it, yeah. but at least I'm kind of aware of it, and, like, if I have interactions with people, then, that are actually interactions, please. But you're probably not a lot of the phone as we speak about people that are eight hours. Yeah, on no. their phone. I mean, I have days like this too when I'm like uh, at home in bed and I have like this day where I just want to stay in bed. You know, I'm just yeah. watching shit. I'm like constantly, I don't know, I look at stuff. Yes, that happens sometimes. But like, if I if I actually like live my life and I go out outside of my house and I have interaction with other people. 
then that's why it ends. Take it, take it away. Yeah, but I mean, I can also, I can also understand because it's so easy. You just put your headphones in, and then they, you disconnect from everybody else, right? It's just yeah. like ah, oh, now I don't have to care about what other people want to tell me or think about me anymore because now I'm fucking in my own, own zone, and that. It's funny that nowadays we're talking a lot about mindfulness, and I heard about these guys that he said like, uh, when I grew up, I had mindfulness all the time. I used to take a train, mindfulness. I wasn't on the phone. <laughs> yeah. I used to eat. I looked out the window. I looked out the window, and I saw the trees and the birds and the sky and like we this forget and that. that we're an animal, you know. That we're a developed monkey that knows how to talk about things that are not purely survival. Yeah. This is what yeah. we are. Yeah, we're a monkey that is not eat, doing only like when there's a big danger, yeah. or when he found food, no. or when he found a shelter. We can talk about all the other stuff. Like it's basically like I don't know if you if you know about this. But for the monkeys, the politics work better. They have one mm -hmm. alpha. They have. All the people who work around it and they all work together though if someone yeah. finds something out he's going to tell the rest and everybody else is going to do it and for us it's, you know, we tell something and then no and yes and oh my god and this is it. <laughs> and then at the end in our phone scrolling in instagram like this is where it's gonna end yeah i mean th th this is this is something that it's a it's a big world problem that can be solved with a very simple solution, very very simple. Like, and and this is something one of these like ten ten no. commandments of design. No. It's it's like design doesn't mean a lot, and this is for no. everything in our world. Like, I can enjoy a good meal when I'm preparing it. I it's something that I really enjoy. I really enjoy to make food. I really enjoy to, to have a good conversation. It's something that brings me way more joy than For sure. And, and it's so simple to grab a person and to talk. It's so simple. It's so simple. <laughs> but everybody is like. No, that was, for example, something that I really didn't like in design, in this switch of design. I mean, first year, everybody was still like, oh, I have time. I, have to, to, I can do this. And we had dinner parties three times, four times, five times a week, right? It was just like, so simple. And then suddenly everybody became like, oh my God, I need to worry about myself. I need to, I'm so stressed, I, I can't do this. And it's like, dude, we're doing, we're making dinner together. And even there, if you're with someone else, you're probably gonna have more ideas on your issue that you have at this moment than if you just sit there by yourself, yeah. trying to think about it, right? Breaking your mind on it. Yeah. But again and again, people just look to themselves and like panicking and like, no, I can't do this right now. And I'm, I'm just like, and also, yeah, it's no stress. It's like, you share stuff, you care for each other at the same time. It's like, it's so much and it's so nice. And then- it's so human. Yeah, it's so human. And then all people want to do is like, oh, let's go to a bar and get drunk. I'm like, I like that. I, I also love <laughs> doing that, but like, that should that that's not my main focus in life, right? That's like that's a fun part of it, yes. Yeah. But like, why do we put so much value on it, and why don't we just like hang out together, be creative together, or cook together, or I don't know, do garden work together, anything? Just do it together instead of even even like even sometimes I like being with people, you know, we just come to the same place and we just all work on different things. We don't even have to talk, but we're in the same room. Yeah. We can feed off each other's energy. It's like, it's just nicer to be together than just being by myself. Yeah. And I feel like, I don't know, for me, it's very extreme, this feeling. And then sometimes I feel like, oh, I'm, I'm putting too much on the, on other people that I'm like, uh, like, yeah, let's do something and, or like, Let's let's cook together. Let's make this together. It's like, uh, no, it's like too much for me now. I'm like, how is this too much? We, for because anyone? we put these concrete walls around us, mm -hmm. and we feel that this is how life should be. Yeah. Because each one of us has its own cube, yeah. separated from everyone else. Yeah, true. And 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 we shouldn't live like that. Yeah. We should live in a community. Yeah. When people know about your stuff, when people yeah. 
can help you, when people can look at you for who you are yeah. and not just like what you wear or like, and, and <coughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's there. It's, yeah. it's, it's there. I think, uh, I think this is why I really like what you said about like your retreat, uh, when you retreat, like, uh, yeah, just one day, like, look, also like a lot of people don't understand this, but for me, like what is, and I, I, I realized this is a big struggle for me, especially in design academy, because like people apparently change French friends all the time. But to me, if you're, if you're my friends once you're my friend forever, right? And you really have to fuck up bad to like make me not be your friend anymore. Yeah. So like once I come to this level that I'm good friends with someone and it's like, for me, it's really hard to understand that they're like, oh yeah, no, I think this is not working out anymore. I'm like, dude, like <laughs> we, we are friends. Like what is the, what is the, where's the issue? Like we don't even, we don't have to have the same life goals. We don't have to have the same visions on like how our lives are supposed to be. We don't even have to like the same people as long as when we're together, we have a good time and like we, it makes support sense that yeah, we support each other. That's all we need. Yeah. But then no, like I, I need more from a friendship. I need this and I, I want to have friends that I can build a future with. If you have these friends as well, it's great. Amazing. It's, it's amazing. It's good for you, but that doesn't mean that you should just ignore all the other people that are there just because you think that you maybe not get as much out of this relationship as the other person it's like again this egoistic thing like oh i think this person gets more out of friendship than me i think so what then just be happy that you can give someone else yeah. this friendship that they, they <laughs> get something out of you like just be happy about this but no you have to look at yourself like oh, no it's like yeah, no, i don't get it and i had a couple of situations like this in design academy and i was very shocked by it and i, I just couldn't understand and got me very angry and then like because I didn't understand I got so angry it was also very hard to talk about it because obviously my feelings were hurt in that situation yeah. I was like I try to defend myself and try to like but at the same time then you also don't really get to the same point that you actually want yeah. to like say to each other which is then again yeah problematic but uh, yeah that's something for me is like if you're my friend once you're probably gonna be my friend forever you know and even if we don't see each other for three years, if I see you again, it's probably going to, whoa, <laughs> I'm so, oh, yeah, so happy to see you. What have you been up to? Like, blah, 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 blah. It's like, it's just, it's, it's just, you know, like, it is, yeah. But, yeah, like, I guess some people don't, don't really have that. And yeah, and it, it's always, it's, it's like a circle. We're all coming back to the same, to the same cause, to yeah. all this stuff of like, we're chasing, something that it's not correlated yeah. to 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 us as humans well yeah but also like being so afraid to be vulnerable and stuff like for example like i realized in design academy because i like in, in like beginning of third year i was super depressed like i couldn't even leave my bed like i was like i like i can't this is too much for me to just leave my bed um and like some people were like, yeah, they were trying to help me and some people did not at all and like they didn't care and it's like, fine, it's their decision. But like, what did I want to say? Mm -hmm. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what did I want to say? What were we talking about before then? Uh, friendships. Friendships, yeah. yeah. Coming back to the same uh, the cause, maybe this is what I said. Um, Boy, I had such a nice thing I wanted to say, but now I completely forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, the, I know the feeling. Oh yeah, no, no, being vulnerable. That's what. Yeah, vulnerable. Point. Yeah. Um, and like, it was so hard for me to like tell people, and like, I didn't want to implement this on people, and I didn't want to talk to people about it. And, but once I realized that, bro, like, I'm going to tell everybody I know, I'm going to tell them, and by the way they react to it, I know if they should be my friends or not, right? But as long as I put myself out there and, like, I tell, like, how I feel and, like, what I think, then people can decide, like, 
I can give people also the opportunity to decide for themselves if they want to be part of this or if they don't want to be part of this, right? But as long as you're like always like in yourself and you never tell people what's going on and you also don't communicate if there's an issue or anything, then it's never going to get resolved and you're never going to yeah. get anywhere. And it's, this is so hard sometimes to make people say like, yo, like if there's a problem, just fucking come to me, tell me, like we can resolve it. As long as you don't tell me, oh, you're a fucking asshole and like, I don't yeah. want to see you anymore. <laughs> and you like, give me constructive reason why there's an issue. Oh, it's easy. Let's talk about it. There's no problem. There's no hard feelings. I can also understand yeah. that if we're not on the same level, we're on the, on the same level. That's or not level, but like the same yeah. wave, whatever. Like it's totally fine, and like you don't have to be, but just accept me as the way I am, and I accept you the way you are. And if there's an issue, come to me, talk, and just talk to me about it. That's all I'm asking. And yeah, I guess even that for some people is an issue to do. But I can also I can also understand why it's like hard sometimes to just like put your like emotions on on your like on your sleeve and just like yeah. put them out. I think it's to make yourself vulnerable is also very scary. But I think once you take that step and once you see how much acceptance and love you get in return, it's also such a good feeling, you know, like but you have to take the risk of like putting yourself out as well. And yeah, that's something I realized as well in Design Academy that like just talk to people about everything and then you're also going to realize very fast who's going to be your good friends and who's not going to be your good friends and then you can decide if these not good friends just going to yeah. be friends or not friends at all both fine but you have to talk about it in the first place and if you don't nothing's ever going to happen so yeah yeah that's that's a beautiful way to maybe finish our podcast yeah <laughs> it's a beautiful point i really yeah. like it i would love to finish it that way even yeah, though we sure. can i mean you can go on this. for hours probably yeah <laughs> but i think this is this was a beautiful point yeah it's like yeah i think that's that's probably even what i learned most in design academy is like put yourself out there and not only towards your friends because also when i talk to teachers i was so afraid to tell teachers that i just like mentally i'm just i can't do what you ask me to do right now and but once i told them and like were so understanding they were like they were all like concerned for my well-being and just be like take your time do what you need to do yeah. and if you want to come back you come back and if you don't want to come back you don't come back right but yeah put yourself out there to kind of get the reaction and then it's just yeah you can deal with every everybody's anything kind yeah. of yeah that's amazing yeah thank you you're very welcome. <laughs> Thank you. This was amazing. It was yeah. super nice. <laughs> I really enjoyed this one. Yeah. Thanks again. Thank and you. guys, see you next time on Design Academy Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a name yet, but maybe maybe in the comments. <laughs> That's how they do, right? In the comments. Yeah, put it, put it in the comments. <laughs> don't forget Thanks. to like and share. <laughs>